Yes, good evening. Welcome back. This is the Spurs Corner, episode number 14, I believe. Yeah, episode number 14. Uh, welcome back. Sava is not here, so we've brought in some extra firepower. Um, Sean, debut on the channel, mate. Um, hope you enjoy your stay and welcome. How are things? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, I sounded like a hotel rep then. I have no idea why I said that, but... Yeah, how's it? <laughs> yeah, good, mate. Good, good, good. I hope, I hope my stay's uh, enjoyable as well. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, I hope they do. Um, how much does it stay cost? <laughs> like Airbnb or? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a free hotel, mate. Um, lots to get through tonight, of course. Um, pre-season, we're going to talk about uh, Madison, Jaffa Tanganga, obviously the new arrival, Spence, which should be announced tomorrow. So, Iggy, um, how's things, mate? I'm very good. That the Jed Spence thing has to be the worst kept secret ever. We've had the shots of, of photos of him in a, in a Spurs shirt. We've seen him sit down and interview. We've seen everything, but yet the announcement is not even imminent. But apart from that, all good. Have we signed anyone today? No, we haven't. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, it's been it's been it's never a dull day in this fan base, is there? Um, Will, how's things, mate? It's good. Going good. Um yeah, I've been tired this week. I don't know why, but I've been very, very, very tired. But I'm here. Well, good. Well, there's lots to get through. And, of course, Coover is here as well, so we've brought extra firepower. So it's the famous five. Um, welcome back, Coover, mate. How's things? Uh, yeah, a bit of a rush this evening. Wasn't expecting to do any streaming, but here we are again. So uh, <laughs> cheers for having me on. Wasn't expecting uh, to do any streaming. Coover, I wasn't. you stream... All day, every, every day. day. <laughs> day. Yeah. For a guy who doesn't have a channel, you should do day. it. It's very special to me. <laughs> nice. Nice. Kuva, we need to get you to do a show on my channel. Like three or four, so I can just sit back and relax. <laughs> Kuba, you actually need, you do need to get a Spurs channel. Because like you're on everyone's streams, but you don't have a channel. You're telling me this, yes. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it might be in the works, so you never know. Yeah, I was saying, saying to look, uh, behind closed doors. Um, but we've already got 147 people in the chat, which is absolutely obscene. Uh, all I ask you to do is subscribe to everyone's channel, obviously not Kuva. The link it will be down below. And uh, and su subscribe to myself as well and smash the like button. Let's try and hit 100 likes ASAP. Um, Pre-season, the South Korea, two games, one against the Korean All-Star 11 and the second one against Sevilla. Um Two completely different games. One, an absolute goal fest from both sides. And then, obviously, playing against the better personnel, we were a bit more tested. Iggy, I'm going to come to you first. What did you make of, them? What did you make of the first game? You know, 6-3 win. What did you make of it? It's... <laughs> A six three win is just something that you know we, we're not we're not we're not accustomed to these sort of um, results. But look, at the end of the day, it was a first outing. It was good first and foremost to see the boys back. It felt like it was um, an eternity since the Norwich away game. It felt like such a long time. Um, the, the, the game was just yeah. Look, first half it was um, you know it was exciting a little bit, for, really. A Attacking and 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 in a K League selection that I knew very I knew very little about. I have to, I have to say that, but they were more physically advanced in, in that sense because they're into their season, aren't they? So it was a good little test. It was um goals galore, mistakes and 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 you know, but more than anything else in that first game, the only thing I took away is the fact that it was good to see the boys back, good to see them getting minutes on the legs. There was goals, there was mistakes, there was um. You know, good to see Richarlison making his debut. Um, can you believe in these two games, we've only seen one out of the six yeah. uh, play. We haven't seen anyone else. It's insane. So we're practically playing with the same team as last season, uh, Richarlison aside. So, but look, it was just great. I, I, I've, I, ever since we've been back from the K, you know, the K League game, the Sevilla yesterday, it's just great having the boys back. I feel like football's back. It is back and I'm enjoying it. I feel like I've got new energy about it my, in myself just having them back because i was getting bored with just a transfer talk i'll be honest with you guys do you feel like there's a morale lift in in the fan base now the, the it's just lift. a great buzz I, I i listen at the end of last season i i, I was I, i've been saying it every day man doing the videos it's just a great buzz about the place whether i go outside the stadium or when i'm hanging around outside hotspur way there's genuinely a great buzz there's people that come 
all the time to you know autographs and and photos and just a great buzz about the place from the end of the, the back of last season and it's just carried on again right from the players before they went to south korea you know people waiting around for the double sessions at the end of the double session which is a long day if you're if you don't know there's a double session on people still outside at 8 p.m at night waiting for the players to come out um there's just a great buzz about the place and obviously we're doing signings you know six signings in in, in in and we're still in july you know we haven't there we are seeing things that we haven't seen in a long time you can argue of the level of the players coming in some people will feel underwhelmed um and so forth but we are doing the business we're getting the business in can we do more of course we can but we are seeing things that we haven't seen in a very very long time that has to be said and there's a there's a great enthusiasm i feel um, around the place and, and long may it continue yeah I hope so too mate I really really hope so too um Sean what are your thoughts on you know the morale around the football club do you feel like there's a spring in everyone's step at the moment yeah yeah I, I echo uh I echo Iggy's sentiments um that I think that I think everyone in the community has certainly been bored I can't I can't count on the fingers of two hands and two feet how many times I've gone over the same nonsense content over the last four weeks about the right wing backs or, you know, analyzing players, it, it gets pretty, you know, boring. And so it's a breath of fresh air to have new things to talk about. And yeah, I think that everything looks good. Obviously there's a couple of things that are disappointing. One of them, I think I agree with Iggy, you know, we didn't get to see any of the new talent apart from Richarlison um, thus far. And if I'm honest, like in terms of taking the takeaways from the two games, they were completely different games. One of them didn't feel like a friendly at all. The, the first one was a lot of fun to watch. And I don't think there's too much you can take away from either in terms of how the team is doing, but there was individuals that I think you can look at and 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 either have you know a bit of a positive spin on or a bit of a, a negative spin. I'm I was a little bit concerned, like initially, yes, uh, on uh, Saturday yesterday when we were watching the game against uh, Seville, I was a little bit concerned initially with like how Hoiberg's performance was and, and like Skippy in the midfield. I thought they were underwhelming massively. But then I actually, when we broke it down and Cooper was on the string with me, I think that really what I was a bit annoyed with was that we were once again crowded out, Henry, in the midfield. It reminded mm. me of a lot of games last season, like the Southampton game, the Watford game at periods, when we, even though we snuck that 1-0 that win. The Brentford game, the Brighton games, when they squeezed the midfield and and we had you know two players in there that were left to kind of com- combat with five or six different uh, players from the opposition. And yesterday we didn't see any, I guess, the dynamism or fluidity with the thought processes of the defenders or the attackers. Nobody came deep from the forwards and nobody went forward to help from the defence when they were uh, when they when they were um, under under pressure and. I do think that that press is a, is a concern. I know it's only a friendly, so there's not too much to take away from it. I'm not trying to say, not trying to sound negative, but for me, I want to see, I wanted to see more in the second half Ooh. of the game. I think we saw a little bit more from it, but um, generally, mate, yeah, generally I'm really happy. I, there's lots of positives. The only negatives are that we haven't yet seen five out of the six of the players that we that we signed. Um, but also, I feel like we haven't necessarily learned lessons from from that kind of mid, that midfield press, that that kind of when they squeeze the midfield. Some people call it the low block. Some people call it the high press. Whatever it is that when we get that pressure in midfield and there's only two guys there to handle it, we haven't yet figured out that someone needs to come and support either from the front or the back. And we didn't see that yesterday either, which was a bit of a frustration. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, Will, what are your thoughts on on the football club at the moment, you know, the morale um, around the place? And there seems to be an excitement so far. Six players already through um, the door. Spence will be announced tomorrow. What, what are your... You know your thoughts at the moment with the way the uh, the fan base is in the football club. The fan base? No, well, because a lot of our fans are probably trying to get saying, me in trouble right away, aren't you, Hen? Well, <laughs> you, you, channel, you can say whatever you want. Everyone knows that. You know, there's no. You know, I'm not gonna. You know, well, you I, I know it. I'm free to say whatever I want on the show. It doesn't mean the people in the comments are going, are going to enjoy what I have to say. Um, no, I mean it was good to. Like I haven't streamed a lot over the last couple of weeks, just because, like, kind of like what Sean said, um, it's just so repetitive, dude. Like for me, mm-hmm. I'm just saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's just kind of like say that again. Exactly. <laughs> it's just it gets 
it gets to you. But no, I mean, then then for me too, being in Korea and having lived in Korea for you know thirteen plus years, I get um, I get a little bit weird with things. I had some some good experiences in Korea and some bad experiences in Korea. Um, usually the bad experiences while there were some some native ones a lot of them came from fellow expats so like seeing oozing uh, expressions uh, on the subway acting like a complete and utter ass um, oh, while funny to us watching it from a westerner standpoint like he's acting like an ass because i know how every other korean person on that train felt and they wouldn't have known what he was, who he was. Right? Yeah, who he was. So you just got this extremely loud guy dancing on the train, taking his mask off. You know, okay. da, 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 like it's. <laughs> I'm just sitting there with my hand in my face, like, oh my gosh. Um, it made good content for his channel, but like for the other 75 people on the train, um, I'm sure they weren't enjoying <laughs> it very much. But, um, that's just me being me. Um, if you've never lived in Korea, you would have never known that there was an issue, but um, if you had, you would. But, um, yeah, yeah, cringy culturally, exactly, c cute. But, um, no, I mean, as far as the Tottenham stuff goes with other things, too, um, the amount of Gil love that's been going on, I think, is, is silly. Um, what else has been mm -hmm. silly? He had a good first half in the first game, didn't he? Of uh, of doing what? Being out of position. <laughs> didn't, 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 wow! Didn't Brian Hill? He could have. Well, in my opinion, I think he could have done a little bit better closing down on that first goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he well, gave, he gave he lazily, back, lazily into that challenge. I mean, that's the problem. Back. Like, he's supposed to be like pressing is supposed to be one of the only one of the two things he's good at. Um, and he really didn't. He really didn't do it. Um. And for me, the problem with Brian Hill is he's so one-footed that whenever he we try to play him on the right, like I thought when he came, I thought he actually did better, even though he didn't do anything, better when he came in for Sun in the second match than he did in the first half of the first match, simply for the fact that he always goes left. So he ends up left. So in that first half against the Korean opposition, when we, were, we couldn't, really create anything because the way that our that the Conte system works is there needs to be somebody in that spot. Those two attacking mids, that right mid, left mid, the Sun Kulu positions. He was playing in the Kulu position at that time. Um, isn't that central? He was sitting in the center of the field or creeping over into the left hand side and there was nobody there except Lucas Moore playing on the over the other on the right mm. from a wing back position or whoever's playing wing back at that time. Um that's not how it works. So you, the reason why we get overrun in midfield is one, the the the, um, the wing backs and the right and left center back are the ones who are supposed to break that press, and we don't we don't have quality there yet. So that's why it was frustrating for me. I can't get too upset about how we performed against Sevilla because the we're, we were playing with the same players that we always had problems with. So once we see a Perisic in that role, or once we see um, Lucas Mora, I, I thought he was decent. He wasn't good, but I mean, he wasn't any worse than Sassignon or, or <laughs> Lucas Mora in uh, right wing back. Yeah, it was no worse than the other two. I thought he was. I, I do want to. He, he was like absolutely that, smashed by that guy Acuna, a left back. The Acuna was just bullied him off the ball. Yeah, except that it, d defensively. Like, yeah, but I mean, times, going nine times in forty-five minutes. It was a nice experiment to see what I don't, I don't know what the thought process was with Lucas Moura being there. If it's an experiment to see if he can do it or just to give him minutes, I don't know. But he was absolutely dominated by Acuna uh, for forty-five minutes. It was in, it was it was really. But the thing I liked the thing I liked about uh, Mora and seeing him play there is that when he did make it to the to the corners, he was quick to put a ball in, whereas Emerson would get down there, stop, wait. Yeah play the ball back like there's a couple of times where emerson literally had men open in the box and because he dawdled on the ball it just it died it, it was just so frustrating like 
for me, I'm not concerned about the defensive side because it had three in the back system with Romero there. You know, the a midfielder and that right center back is supposed to be making up for the, the for the the weaknesses in, in an attacking wing back. In a Conte three four three, they're really not even wing backs. They're more even like right midfielders, oh, wingers. Yeah. wingers. Yeah. So if they get back and defend, that's good. But that's not. I'm not. Let's just say Emerson gets keeps getting burned defensively, but he's putting banging crosses into the box. I, I I'm happy. I really don't care about the defensive side of of things in a Conte for Conte wingbacks. Um, I thought positives wise, um, no, because I'm supposed to be positive before I say anything negative. So Brian Hill's hair looked good, but everything else didn't. Um, uh, no, I mean, he had some good, like, dribbles on the ball, but that's what he always does, but it doesn't go anywhere. It just ends in nothingness all the time. It's just time moves, too. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't really I don't really get what... what he, he takes players on, but I don't really see what everyone else sees in Hill. I'll, we'll come back to Hill in a minute. Cooper, what's, what's your thoughts? Pre-season, the morale of the fan base. Um, you know, sum it up for me so far. Um, what do you make of it? Well, keep up. I keep seeing enough of these arguments with some people on the in the chats um, about the, how you weigh up what the preseason is all about, and people say it's just about the fitness; nothing else matters. And I disagree with that. It's the the scoreline doesn't matter, but the performances certainly matter. Mm. You want to see things from players. You want to see them fitting into positions they haven't tried before, or fitting in with teammates and uh, getting little passages of play together. Well, makes you like pay no pay attention to and think, yep, that could work. That combination going down the right could work. Or things like that. Now, players like Brian Hill, uh, I'm with Will on this one. I don't think he really did an awful lot. He he ran around well. He got himself into some good positions, but at the end of the day, didn't really do a lot with it. It was um, it it was uh, it was kind of promising with no end result. It sounds a little bit like Lucas Moura in that respect over his. Well, career except for one game, really, um, and uh, right back for Lucas Mora didn't do anything particularly wrong, but he didn't do a lot right either. So it's clearly not a fit. I think this is why, um, even at the the, the uh, sort of lacklustre response we're getting from fans over the Jed Spence signing, there's one thing he does offer that none of those other right wing backs offer at the moment. He is at least exciting. <laughs> He does beat players. He has a lot of pace. There is that side of him going uh, going for him. And if we can harness that and get him to consistently lift his head and pick out some players, I think that's probably the weakest part of his game. His awareness isn't great from what I've seen anyway. I must admit, I've only seen him about, what, four or five times in total. And some of them was sort of extended highlights. But he doesn't strike me as somebody that's, uh, you know, really... Uh, <laughs> Uh, got, got a grasp of tactically and uh, uh, an, an awareness of what's happening around him. So uh, hopefully that gets worked on with Conte. I think it will, of course. He's a great coach. His whole staff with Conte is brilliant. We already know this. So Spencer's got a little bit going for him. A lot of the others haven't. Um, and we're still looking at a lot of fans bigging up the likes of Eric Dyer, saying, you know, he's he's great and everything, but he isn't. He's... Uh, it's gone from a four out of ten player to a five out of ten player, and as I just said on um, Tommy's a little while ago, people are treating him like he's the like Matt's Hummels or something. He's and he's not. He's he's he's, a, he's an average player. He's doing okay. Still mistakes in him, but I mean, if we went out in even the ones we're getting rejected by at the moment, the centre backs that we're talking about, um, the you know being taken out of the equation, the Bastonis, the Bremers, and stuff like that. There's plenty of others around like De Bruyne and. Uh, 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 Skriniar as well is another one that isn't over. That's another one that could be a potential target for us. I don't see why we can't get players like this and vastly improve the defence still. And then if you throw in a, one I've been talking about a while on right wing back, the, the, the likes of uh, Hans Hatterbois from, from Atalanta, he should be very available. He really does uh, fit the bill for an attacking wing back. Get him and Spence in. I think not, that's not good at crossing though either, mate, is it? You know, we looked, we looked at him, didn't we? Can you remember? Uh, I, I think he's I think he's very underrated with it. He's one one thing, another one, he is very exciting again. He's got the uh he will take players on, he'll get down to the byline. You don't have to be that great at crossing if you can hit the byline and cut the ball back. It's uh 
it, you just got, you've got to hit an area, really, haven't you? You know, exactly. You Kyle to... Walker used to do that. He didn't really pick the man. You want out. a right back who's going to pick you out. You're looking at, you know, a very small percentage of people. We'll come back to this in in a couple of minutes. Before you change few... topics, real quick though, uh, Mister One Three Three AR, um, does anybody exactly like? Yeah, my mom I likes do. me. My I mom do. likes me a lot. Um, also, I too, I, I didn't slander. I didn't slander <laughs> expressions. By the way, I just said I'm sure he doesn't know, right? And the people that he employed to uh, culturally um, manage his trip uh, didn't do a good job in informing him how, the cultural norms of the country in which uh, he was uh, residing in for a culturally a naive. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not slander. It's not slander because slander means I said something he didn't do. When you can go watch it on his own channel, right? <laughs> All I did was reiterate what he had actually said. But I'm just saying in Korea, they have spe specific cultural norms that we don't have in Western cultures. So, um, yeah, if you would like to know those, uh, I can tell you later. But um, j just just don't be a, don't be yeah, a twat. There's just no need for it, you know. Um, while you're here, though, uh, make sure you smash a like. You haven't got to be here, but you are. So you clearly like the channel. Um, Timman007, uh, thank you for the super chat. It's very much appreciated. I know the window has been so far so good. I feel we still need a marquee signing to really push us on this season and show we mean business. Um, do you know, I was going to talk about him later, but I'm going to talk about him now. Um, James Madison. Lots of people raising eyebrows. Some people are all over this. I think he would be that, you know, wow, that marquee signing. Um, this is just my opinion. I'll get um, the rest of the panel very, very shortly. But I think behind Kevin De Bruyne, obviously we all know how, you know, he's arguably the best midfielder in the world. In the Premier League, for out-and-out out number eights and number tens, there's a bit of a drop-off. Madison falls into that drop-off, but he's at the top of that drop-off. 20 goal contributions last year for Leicester. 30 goal contributions in all competitions. We lack so much creativity without Kane and Son. The, the, you're going to see Matt Madison hypothetically in a Spurs shirt, do well in the teams that play, um, that we have all the possession. When we play teams like Man City and Liverpool, we're frightening on the counter-attack. When we play teams like Forest, Fulham and Bournemouth next year, and we've got all the ball, Madison's going to be the one that's going to be spraying it about like Prime Banksy. So that's, that's just my opinion. This is an open question to the panel. You just respond accordingly. Madison, is he a marquee signing in your opinion? Yeah, well, we spoke about it. I'll, just, I'll go first quickly, if that's okay. We, we spoke about it just very briefly in the background, right? Is I think you framed it as like the, the the biggest signing of the of of the summer if we come if he comes in. Um, I said no to that, but I do think he's the marquee signing. It's a weird one for me. Like I, I think that he, I, I've been calling out for a marquee signing. If it's not a right wing back or a centre back, it needs to be mm -hmm. someone in the creative role. Is he the marquee signing? Yes. Of what we of what's left because of the value it will cost because of the English thing because of all you know all of the uh, and the things you've just mentioned, but I, do I still th do I think he's the biggest signing of the summer? Do I think he's the one that's gonna do, that's gonna be the difference for Tottenham? And I feel a little bit conflicted on this because I've said it on my channel a thousand times. Like twenty five points we dropped to low block whatever low block teams whatever you want to call them teams that have, where we had the possession uh, last season. And if we could find the solution to that, then we would have got to ninety points and then been a challenge for Man City. So for me. Figuring out that solve is massively important, and, and James Madison might be that. But what I would say is that I still think that there's somebody else that we've signed who is more important. I think that's Basuma, and I think Basuma probably will be the the guy that makes the the biggest signing re retrospectively. I think Basuma will turn out to be the biggest signing for us of what we've done so far. And if Madison's the next one off, the next cab off the rank. I still think Madison will be absolutely amazing, but I just don't know how many minutes he's going to play relative to uh, the mm. cost and the wages and everything else, right? Like, I do think he's going to be a necessary cog. I know he can play off the left, and I know he can play in a 3-5-2. And I just don't, I'm not entirely sure of what, of how the formation is going to change if we have him. Do, if we're going to spend 16 million on him, does that mean that we then have to figure out a way to play him more often? And I had the same concerns about Richarlison when you pay 60 million for him. You know, is he only going to be, you know, a starter in less than 30% of games? If so, is it value for money? I don't know. I'm I'm very much up for the transfer, Henry. Uh, and I think he'll be, a, a, he'll, he could be the solution that we need to find those extra points that we dropped last year. But is he the mark? Is he the 
the biggest or the most important signing of the summer? No. Will he be the marquee signing? Probably yes. And I, I'd, I'd very much welcome it. So I'm not sure if that's a bit of like a wishy-washy answer, but I still think no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's going to be the biggest, the, the biggest difference for us next year. Yeah, but Suma, the way we play with a two in the midfield, it's just if we could, um, you know, effectively change to a, a three four one two or a three five two and fit Madison in, because at times he has actually played on the wing for Leicester. You know, I know he's not blessed with you know blistering place like Sonny, um, but that could be an option. Iggy, what are your thoughts, James Madison? Quality players are always welcome. Bring them in, bring them in, and let Conte do his work. He gets paid twenty million a year to do exactly that. Quality should never, ever be ignored. should never be passed on. Don't worry about the, the wages and stuff like that. Get them in because when you think about what we've actually spent on a transfer window and what could we potentially gain from selling a few of those Deadwood on, we really haven't spent that much. So for me, now it's like we've got six players in with the money that we spent on them. You guys know how much it is. So it's not like... We've overspent or we're over budget. We're knowing we haven't even scraped the barrel with it with a with the money that we spent on those six players coming in. Mm. For me now, there's three key areas, and and Sean just alluded to it. Centre back, because we always said we're gonna bring two centre backs in. Longley is here for the season. We need to get another one in. The, the obviously Berg one needs to be replaced numerically. We won down, even though we put Richarlison in. We always needed a striker, even with Berg one in there. Berg one has gone, so the pie has been spoken about, and that's something maybe perhaps we can speak about later. But let's just say numerically, we replace him with the pie. That would be a good sign in for me, but it could be any forward. Not, I'm just using the pie as an example. And then, of course, we know we're lacking creativity now. We know from the defence, Longley has been spoken about very well from playing from the back. His distribution from the back, he's got a lovely left foot. Um, Lloris spoke about him, not just character, like, character, like his characteristics, but also his character. So he spoke very well of him. He's brilliant at playing the ball from the back. Then we, from the midfield, we've got the likes of Bissouma, Benson. If we bring Madison in that final third, we got a potentially a, a trio right there. I'm not. I'm not um, leaving out wing. Uh, not wings, but um, Hoiberg and uh, Skip out of this. But I'm just using the three players in particular: Bentica, um, Basuma, and then potentially um, Madison. You got three ballers in there that they're very good with the football, very comfortable with the football. You. You got players that can unlock the diff from the from the mid mid the deeper midfield, play a pass in that attacking third, and then you got Madison potentially. That like, he, he, he it'll be it'll, it'll be like a kid in a candy store trying to put, put the ball through for Bentaku or for Son or for Kane. Kane can be closer to the goal. He wouldn't have to drop as much. He would have to pick and choose his moment when to drop off, but he wouldn't have to do it as much. So for me. We make the we we would have the wing backs again because like I said we've not seen any of the new new players yet so we'd have the wing backs coming in, um you know giving us the width and the other but we'll also have the quality in the middle of the park because some games especially the Brighton one last season at home really stood to my mind it still does has to have we couldn't break a team down because we lacked a player like Madison in that and area. That's exactly what I'm saying. Teams like that yeah. when we have got all the ball, you know. Yeah. At their home. game plan is yeah. going to be to, to stop Kane. If you stop Kane, a lot of the time he stops on. But if you throw, you know, more players in there, it's harder for the defensive team to stop. Yeah, that's why Man City scores so Henry, many we were, goals. Henry, we were so goals. rubbish against that Brighton game. We were so mm. rubbish in the wings that as a, as an opponent, all you have to do is close down the middle, make sure Kane doesn't get on the ball, and you know. And if he does, make sure Son have a look where Son is. So once you've you stop that move. And you've got nothing else to break them down with, you're screwed, especially for the home games. And next year, we have to make that ground, our ground, a fortress. We have to make it very down. And there's going to be teams like the Brightons or like last season. There's going to be a lot, a lot more games like that at our home ground. We have to find a way to break those down for the very recent reasons that Sean said. We lost a lot of points against 25. those. I think it was 24 teams. or 25 too points. Too many. Yeah. That's too many. So we need, that's first a, of all, that's, that's a lot, 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 of, that's a lot of points. Yeah. So that's the first thing we need to improve on is not make make sure that that doesn't happen again, or certainly not 20, 25 points. Absolutely not. So oh. we need to sort that out. 
we're not we're, we're never we're never going to be able to like you're always going to drop points at some point in the season of right course. so let's not let's not, let's not presume that Madison or Ericsson whoever it would have been is going to be the soul for it for all 25 but if we can I, I I was saying at the start of the season sorry to to uh take back the spot but I was saying that I think that to someone who can figure out that solve whether it's wing backs or whether it's the creative player is probably more important than a monster center back in real terms because we only conceded five goals from our last eight games and eight goals from our last 15, right? So as long as you, if you can pre- rely on and rest assured that uh, Dyer, Davies and Romero don't get injured, then, um, which obviously you can't do, then um, defensively, we were pretty good anyway, second half of the season. So I, I'm, 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 I'm going to agree at the bat on the Conte. We're going to, yeah. you know, with his coaches and he being such a good manager, we're going to be better defensively anyway. And you throw Lengle in there as well. It's another body. Yeah. Just quickly, what is all this slander in the chat on Will? It's just completely not necessary. It, you will be blocked. Just quickly, I'm just saying it. You will be blocked. Um, and I will come to you in two seconds. We've got 400 people in the chat. Make sure you subscribe. And to Will, um, Sean and Iggy, all their links are down below. And please, can you smash, put these likes up? We're only on 135 and there's 417 of you. We should easily be able to hit 250 in the next minute or so. But Will... Um, Madison, what are you well, I have to say, Will, there's a lot of fans in the chat as well. I have to yeah, say, there's there's a lot of people yeah, big up, big up, the, of... big up the fans. <laughs> I, I mean, look, these other guys don't bother me. I know I lived in Korea for 13 you, years. You, I know what's got culturally... million Korean fans for a start. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know what's culturally acceptable and what's not. I know what's rude behavior and what isn't, right? So if you don't know and you disagree, if you think that I'm being harsh on expressions, look, I like expressions. I'm a subscribe to his channel. I think Will he's a funny guy. I haven't said anything him. bad other than other than the people that he employed, right, to take care of him on his trip did a poor job. I wasn't even saying he did, because he just was himself. But there are certain places where you can't be expressions in Korea, and there are certain places where you can. And if they would have taken him to the places where he could be himself um, without causing a scene, um, that would be fine. But now you got people. I got some fans today, bro. It's funny. I love it. What's going on? That. You didn't say. You didn't wow. say a single thing that was unreasonable. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was waiting for me to come on today. I suppose. <laughs> uh, I saw your photo, and I thought, who the hell is that? Will Stat Merchant. Brilliant. Love it. I'm loving it though. I, oh, you guys, oh, oh, yeah. I, I, you guys don't even know, dude. Whenever uh, trolls like this jump in. Um, I enjoy it. I get a huge kick out of it. So if the more you do it, the more fun I'm having. So if you think you're getting to me, you're not. <laughs> but I'll, no, I'll on the Madison it, it, thing, it, it, though, sorry, sorry the, yeah, I'd like to talk about football a little bit too, other than uh, just expressions um, in Korea. Um, uh, uh, for the Madison thing, yeah, I think it would be a good signing, but do I think it's it's like box office? Mark, you know, like, no, I don't necessarily. Um, for me, the kind of marquee signing that I would want to see in this window would be somebody at right wing back, a Hakimi, you know, going or center back, somebody who's actually going to impact the system because I, I, I tend to agree with Sean a little bit that if Madison comes in, I don't think he impacts the system as a whole, as much as somebody would in one of those two positions like i think long lay is going to be a lot better like i don't know i think long lay is going to be a good sign so do I, um 100%. yeah but i think the right wing back position i think parasitch is going to be a good signing and i really i'm really upset that we didn't get to see him this week and apparently he's going to be ready for 20 or 30 minutes against rangers so um that'll be good but those two positions i think when we really have because and, and Iggy can attest to this, um, although he, I'm sure he he's an AC Milan fan, so he doesn't watch Inter as much as AC Milan, but I'm sure he sees them far more often than, than the average Joe. But those two together, like Hakimi and Perisic, in that Conte Inter... They were flying, uh, nice they were flying man. That, it was, oh, that's where all that. the creativity came from. It was boom, boom, boom. And to see... To, to see finally see us with that type of quality in those two positions is going to make it's going to be night and day night and day are you are you worried a little bit uh, will a, a lot of people myself included and i think every probably everyone on the channel i know cooper feels the same way because we did the watch along we were 
Like we're, all, we're all presuming that Perisic, oh, it's, it's a devastation. We've got to deal with Sessignon today for the second time. We haven't seen Perisic yet. We're, there's a lot of people that are just assuming that Perisic is going to, you know, first of all, recover from the injury and and that's gonna, not going to have any reoccur- reoccurrence. And secondly, that he's just going to hit the ground running. Is there any, like, are we a little bit guilty of maybe like assuming that this guy is going to, I'm not suggesting that we are, I'm, I'm positing the question. Are we maybe guilty a little bit of like assuming that this guy is going to just hit the ground running in the Premier League? He hasn't played in it before. He hasn't, he hasn't. Players, he hasn't. players like that though, you know, playing at, scoring in a World Cup final, winning Champions Leagues, the amount of experience he's got, you know, winning, winning a league title in Italy, he comes with a pedigree, you know, yeah. and he knows Conte. So Conte, there's, there's going to be a lot of faith yeah. from Conte so, yeah. in him. I think, I don't necessarily think he's going to come and set the world of like straight away, but I don't think it's going to take him long to really, you know, get used to it. Because this is just my opinion, but I don't think the Premier League is as physical as it used to be 10, 10 years ago. You know, the, the yeah. Italian League and the Sp- and even um, the German League at times, there's it's much more there. yeah, physicality. Yeah. The, the Premier League now, it's kind of like, just quickly, who is this? <laughs> Have you not got anything better to do on a Sunday, <laughs> twenty past nine? Just- I, 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 I am I am about the size of an eggplant, though. By the way, <laughs> so he he did get that right. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to take Perry oh, Perry such long. Uh, to be honest, I really no, don't. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I agree Listen. as well. I just thought it would be a good question to you ask. You know what it is? Perisic is a, is a is a seasoned player, undoubtedly. He will bring. He will. He will. He knows exactly. You could see him even uh, even against the game against uh, Valencia the other day. He, both he and and Perisic were seen in a photo chatting away. He already knows what Conte wants. He 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 was the one that converted him to a wing back because he was a winger. Uh, Perisic yeah. and left mm. left forward, so he converted him to a wing back. He struggled with it at first, which is why Ashley Young was brought over to Italy to actually show him how to become a better wing back. Young went there, won the league, and Perisic messed it. So when Young then left, he took over that role. So Young was essentially there to help him understand that role a lot better. They won the league, and both, like Will said, Hakimi and and uh, Perisic were flying on the wings. You had a Barella that was the, the engine there. Brozovic was the deep line playmaker, and then he alternated in the second half of the season with uh, Eriksen over there. And and of course they had a, a third a third um, uh, midfielder, so um, a steady back three the way that we was trying to create at, at Spurs with a, with a, with an experienced goalkeeper which is what Handanovic was for them which is what Luis is for us now so I can see a lot of similarities that he's trying to get what he had at Inter Milan and of course Inter played with the two centre forwards Lukaku and Martinez. That could be, if we do add, the, uh, 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 to answer your question earlier on about Madison, if we do add in the third centre midfielders, then you probably have the two forwards. That instead of having two wide forwards and a striker, you probably end up having two forwards. And that could be any two, really, that you can pick from that lot that we have. It's unlikely, given the numerically how many we have, that we go to a two up front. It, you know, it limits no, no, our no, forward no, options, no. but it is an option. It is are you not option. worried? Though? Are you not worried a little bit? I know that money. None of us are accountants, right? So, I'm sure that they're figuring this stuff out internally. It doesn't matter. But are you not a little bit concerned? I am a little bit concerned. I've taken a lot of heat for being a little bit pessimistic, not like cautious. What are you concerned on about? What is it you're concerned about? I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about spending 60 million quid on Richarlison, right? Which you've already done, right? And I don't know. I don't Why? know how. Well, Why for, are you for concerned two, about that? For, for two two reasons, one is I don't think I don't think he's going to play as much as uh, he probably or a lot of people think he will, and I what, think that he's what, not the again. Stick. Sean, I'm not I'm not being uh, sorry, man. I'm not trying to. Why are you concerned that he's not going to play? Who says that he's not going to play? Right now, my only no, concern, I, my only yeah. thought is is bring yeah. as much quality you in because we for years we've had a bare eleven. Let's yeah, be yeah. honest with each other. We've had a really good eleven, and that is all we could rely on. We had six seven. Bang average Sunday league footballers at best on that bench where we saw how many times last season Conte looking at that bench. I hear you. I hear you. And I hear thought, you. fuck that. Let's, I'm keeping these lot on. I we hear don't you. Want I, that, I, man. It's a squad I, play. It's a squad game. We need five subs this year. I, I hear you. Play. And I, I hope I'm massively wrong. I'm not wrong concerned on about it. spending money on the players and because they're going to play 20, 25 league games. I want to see the quality that they will bring in. If it's just for 20, 25 games, 30 games, so be it. We well, want to... Okay, and that's okay. Man City are doing it. I, I Liverpool am... doing it. Chelsea. 
Yeah, but I don't think we have the same pull. I don't think we have the same personally. The same, I'm, not, I'm not sure Tottenham are at the same level where we can justify that. Same we have kind to of aspire thing. to it. We have I, to aspire I, I, to I know that we level. Do, I know we do, and I'm also not ruling out the fact that injuries are going to come, come into play. And there's many many likelihoods and scenarios, a million scenarios and variables where you can sit there and say, well, Sonny could get injured, or Kane could, or or whatever, or form drops, or whatever. Well, I'm just but, saying that when, with Richardson, we have a player when, that is somebody that. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm positing it as a. I hope I'm wrong. I've said it a million times. I hope I'm wrong. I like the guy. I think he's a great player. But 60 million quid is basically our record signing, and he's also got a bit of an attitude, right? And the same with Memphis Depay. A lot of people now are talking about. We were talking. Cooper. We were talking about this the other day. You, you want you want us to sign Memphis Depay for 20 million? That guy is Steven Bergwijn on steroids with an attitude, right? So if he doesn't if he doesn't get the, the game time, what I worry about, and I'm not saying it's a problem, I agree with you in principle, Coop, uh, Iggy. I'm just saying the, the the concerns I have, and it's I think it's just worth a conversation, even though I always get shot down when I raise it, is no, there's well, it wasn't my intention. There are Sean, synergy. It wasn't my intention. No, 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 no not you, no, no, not, not you, not you shooting me down. I'm saying on my channel, I get shot down all the time oh, for okay, it. Cool. But um, like there is a. There's a chemistry within a team, right? There is there is a like a, a, a synergy that, that players need to work with each other and figure out how to play together and harmony that happens in the dressing room. And I, I am just a little bit worried that in a world where Harry Kane doesn't get injured, Sonny doesn't get injured, and Kulisevsky has a really good season, that Richarlison's not going to get as many minutes as he wants and that that ergo come, becomes a problem with... Somebody whose personality isn't someone who's going to sit there. Harry Harry Redknapp said exactly the same thing uh, in an interview a couple of days ago. He thinks there's a potential problem with Richarlison if he doesn't get played as much. That's all I'm saying. And I worry about, to your point specifically, the same thing. I don't know what James Madison is like as a personality. I don't know if he's, you know, if he's in any trouble. But Memphis Depay certainly would be. So I just worry about like how do we fit everybody in? And these, there's a big, there's some big personalities coming in with big price tags attached to them. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm, I'm, honestly, that's, that's honestly, I, just to answer that, I'm not worried one little bit because egos, it's all fine. But when you when you accept a challenge, when you as a player accept a challenge that you're going to go and play for a top four team, let's just say that we're a top four team because we are. So we, we when you accept that, you know that if you as Richarlison, let's say because you, the name Richarlison keeps coming up, yeah. you know you're going into a team where you have a forward line of Harry Kane Kulusevski, you have uh, uh, you have Sonny. Son in there as well. You know what you're up against. You accept yeah. that challenge, and your ego, your ego has to be put at the service of the team. I don't mind players with attitude because it's that attitude that got them there in the first place. Okay. It's, it's 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 you know it's it's the level that you aspire to play in, and that doesn't mean you're going to get first team football. You have to fight two for uh, nail. Yeah, meritocracy. Uh, exactly, uh, earn it. Yeah, and yeah. when have we ever had a season where We've had Kane, Son, or even Kulizewski since his arrival, where somebody hasn't picked up an injury. It always frigging happens. Okay. We, yeah, yeah. we are four well, competitions, okay. which we want to stay as long as possible on all, on all four fronts. For me, I want us to stay as long as possible in all four, four fronts. And the only way we can do that, if we bring the quality, bring the numbers in, yes, but add the quality to it. And then, game by game, we have a manager who's on 20 million a year it's up to him to get that the 20, 25 players that he's got in the squad to, f- to fully function yeah. for the need of the badge that's at the front of the jersey, not the name at the back of it. That's yeah. how I see it. And if okay. we go, we ha- if we're going to go to that next level, which is where I believe we all aspire to, we may have concerns. No problem with that. I understand what you're saying, Sean. But if we want to aspire to go into that Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool level, we have to start thinking bigger and better. And that means bringing the players in, bringing the quality in and let the manager do his job because this is, okay. these are elite managers that have been at that level for so long where they've managed egos in squads. And you have to be able to manage egos in squads. And I think Conte is not somebody that lets the changing room dictate him. And, and, okay. and I think... And players like Depay... For example, if he accepts to come to Tottenham, he has to realise that this is this is going to be a, this is going to be the the, the the reality of the new this new Tottenham Hotspur. Otherwise, go to, go to another team, go to another team where you're the big fish in that little pond, and you can play as many games as you want. But if you aspire to win things or you want to aspire to, 
We need the squad, man, because Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City are all playing like that. Anyone else that, that doesn't think that that is the winning way of doing things will be left out and be you, left you, behind. You are spot on. You're actually spot on what you're saying. Um, I appreciate the Super Chat, Rookie. Um, does Zinchenko massively improve Arsenal? Um, he's very versatile. He, you know, he can even play in midfield. But, you know, I, I, don't, I think he improves them. Um, but I don't think he massively improves them. But... £30 million pounds for a player that can play multiple systems, multiple positions. Yeah, I'd take it, but I don't think he, I don't think he's the signing that every all these Arsenal fans are, you know, they're acting like they're gonna win the league because they've signed a striker from a team that never that okay. They've signed a, a wing back that only really got in the team because his other wing back got arrested, right? And um Gabriel Jesus, who was at the striker for a team that didn't really have a striker. And that makes sense. Wing. And play yeah, the um, but listen, Arsenal are doing their own thing. I still think they're playing catch up. Um, Will, what, what, what are your thoughts on um, on Richarlison? This is a genuine question to everyone as well, and everyone in the chat. I actually thought that Richarlison, while he didn't score any goals, I thought the increase in quality over the players that we've had in that position, I think, was still evident. You could still see that the confidence and what he's the two things that seem to me is one you could obviously tell that he's still learning the system right that it's different from what he's trying um what he's been playing and then two he looked knackered especially uh in the game against Sevilla he looked really just really tired even from the very beginning which makes sense from the the type of training that they're doing but I I liked what I saw from him the the ideas what he tried to do on the ball his hold up play um, you know, was it amazing? No, but did it give me, did it make me feel more comfortable about the signing? Yeah, it, 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 it did. I, do I think he's an upgrade on Bergvine? Absolutely. Do I think he's an upgrade on Lucas Moore? Absolutely. So for me, it's kind of, it's kind of, and I think that he showed that on the pitch. I thought that he showed that he could come in and actually do a job. So. Yeah, I think with um, with Richarlison, he had a really tough time against Sevilla, but that's because he was always making himself available for the ball, and he was getting fouled a lot. The, the amount of times I thought passed that, Sevilla on Saturday, yeah, he, dirty, he was really man. getting dished, getting it dished out to him, um, and I think he did well on the under those circumstances because a lot of players it would have been easy to just disappear. You, you don't show for the ball under those circumstances because you know you're going to get clattered. But he was happy to, and no matter where it was on the pitch, even when he's up against two players, he was still there for that. Um, so I think he's going to have much easier games. I think he'll settle in well. Uh, Will's making a good point. He's he's learning a new system, so uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for him. But that's a good experience. He's going to um, his teammates are going to uh, appreciate that he is there showing for the ball when they need that outlet. Uh, Richarlison is one of those players will always step up for it. He's happy to get the ball at his feet when he's got three people on him. Um, we don't have too many people that are that confident with that. The likes of Bergwijn, he needs the ball put into his path. He, yeah. he can't play with his back to goal. Uh, entirely different uh, scenario with Richarlison. I think um, then when we talk about the, uh, someone like adding a Madison, for, for me, if you add Madison and Depay, um, I think you're getting the best of both worlds that we're missing at the moment. You get the killer through ball, you get the free kick specialist, you get the one that's always always got those uh, little bits of uh, guile and inspiration to like the sort of flick pass, a little trick or something like that. And you've also got Depay on the other hand, explosive running, directness. He will get into the box, cause havoc. Uh, he does get goals. And the one thing that's usually levelled against him is he's, he's not all that good. He's not got that output, but he does have that output. It's it's there. Yeah. He still averages about a goal every three games, which is pretty decent for any attacking player. Um, you you have, you have those two things together. And then uh, uh, Sean, yeah, he's got concern to put in, concerns about management of egos and things like that. Yeah, it's a fair point, of course. But as Iggy said, that's what Conte is there for. He's an elite level manager. Yeah. It is his job to manage... So you manage these players, they do fit in. I mean, Alex Ferguson, who's quite happy to juggle two sets of strikers when they're winning the treble. Um, 
you didn't see any of them sort of coming out like throwing the toys out of the pram. They knew what's expected. We're talking about Conte here. We're talking about a team that's supposed to be challenging for the title at some point. If we can't bring in those players and manage them, uh, we've got no chance. But let's let's take the opportunity. I think if we did get in the, the likes of Madison and uh, Depay to go with Richarlison, what a nice attacking uh, pool of players we've got to choose from for the whole season. I think we should easily easily get through our workload with that, with that lot. Um, for, so for me, it comes back to getting the defence sorted out because... Uh, even the centre backs, it's it's all uh, um, it's all synergies, isn't it? So you get in the rock solid centre backs, it frees the full back, the wing backs to go forward more, helps the attack. You get more width, more quality up front. The goals come more just because you strengthened at the back as well. So it's it's every single signing is as important as any of the others because this this is a hard the system is a hard working team and everybody plays a vital role in that. But Sumer is going to strengthen the defence by being there. He's also got that great through ball as well. He, yeah. He's just an all-round great signing for us there. Perisic could just be amazing. I don't have any doubts about him coming in and struggling in the in the Premier League. You could put him in a suit of armour and roller skates and he's still going to get an 8 out of 10. He's, he's that good. He's just for sheer me, quality. Look, we, we won't get a full picture until we've seen all six players that have signed in the team. You will see a completely different Tottenham when you have those six players in there. This is honestly, it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be from like this to like this. Honestly, it's gonna be a completely different side. For me, I want to be in a position that I aspire to. I don't know if it's your aspiration, my aspiration is to see a team where that if if one week or in one during the winter I look at Son and Son's got a runny cold, and I look at Kane, and he's got a stomach ache. I can say to the boys, you know what, boys? This week, uh, away away to to, to Nottingham Forest or, or, or home to somewhere, I say, boys, just 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 take a seat. We got Richard. But Iggy, and- Iggy, I hear you. I, 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 I hear you. I aspire, I, I aspire to exactly the same thing you're talking about, and I completely agree with you, and I completely agree with Kuva, and I'm only coming at this from a devil's advocate approach, right? I completely agree with no, you. No. The, o- the only thing I, I want to... The, 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 to, to what you the only That's posit I have is that uh, at Tottenham, Sonny has never, ever, ever had to play second fiddle to anybody. They won't have Harry to. Kane, uh, he they played won't... second fiddle to Lamella at first, the first two or three seasons. I'm not listening. I, 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 I can't remember that far back, but like Harry Short, Kane. I don't care some... about Sun's egos or Kane's ego. I don't well, care. I, I'm not, I, I, you might not care. You might not care, Iggy. But I'm not I'm scared of hurting people's as a, feelings. As a, as a, as, I, I, get, I, I get it. I get it. But I'm, as a fan show, can we not like just can we not just like composite the concept of what happens in a world where Harry Kane, who was never substituted last year, right? I had this debate with Cooper a few times, and I think a few people as well. Like Harry Kane, there was plenty of times last season where Harry Kane didn't need to be on the pitch when we were four 0 up, or five 0 up against Everton, five one up, six 0 up against Norwich. There was plenty of situations, four 0 up against Villa. There's plenty of situations where, and I'm not going to get back into it. Uh, to, into, but I'm just for me, the reason I raise it is because there is potentially, potentially, and I hope you guys can at least acknowledge potentially there is an issue that. Twenty million pound Conte will have to figure out how to how to appease or reassure Kane and Son that they need time on the bench when they're trying to hit their own individual metrics of golden boots or golden assists and stuff. Can, can you at least acknowledge that there no, is no, there is I'm, there is a, there's a job there it. to be done? I'm acknowledging where, it. Yeah. We had Dane Scarlett on the bench. That's why Kane was still on the on the, on the pitch all the bloody time. And if you remember yeah. towards last season, I think was it Arsenal at home. Where, where Son was brought off and he was... I can't remember what game it was, guys. Forgive me. It might have been Arsenal. I remember Son being really unhappy about coming off. Yeah, it was Son. And he was, he was on a hat yeah. trick, I think it was. Yeah. And Son had a... He gave him a hug. Um, Conte gave him a hug and said, you look, we've got another game here. I know you want your top goal scorer because that's what it was about. And I knew... But we've got another game here. That's yeah. the most important one. Right now, I'm trying to keep you fresh. Right, that but in that up. in that same period of games, everyone would recognise that 
Lucas Moura wasn't playing well. And Bergwijn, when he had his moments, took them pretty well in that period of the season. And yet, yeah. because, in my opinion, uh, Kulisevsky had less brownie points, less kudos, less less wins in the bag, less, less you know, scores in the locker, that Lucas Moura came on. And when there were substitutions that were made, Lucas Moura came on for Kulu in the 78th minute. And Bergwijn, despite him outperforming Lucas Moura and deserving more minutes because of yeah. the natural selection process... Sonny, Sonny had to withdraw in the 88th, 89th minute. And Harry Kane never did. And I'll take your point, and I took Cooper's point at the time, that maybe Dane Scarlett was, you know, not worthy of, of the minutes versus Harry Kane, even though it didn't matter. It shouldn't have mattered at the time. But Sonny only gave way in the 89th minute. I'm, I'm not saying it's a problem necessarily. I'm just saying it's going to be interesting to see how Sonny and Kane react to having to sacrifice minutes. Bring it and it will be man. an interesting experiment. Bring it on. Bring it on, because the reality of Spurs uh, has changed, has changed. We cannot go by what's happened previously in a year or two, because look what it's got us, man. Look at what is what, what, what has it achieved, pleasing um, players' egos, because essentially this is what we're talking about. What has it achieved for us as a squad, as, 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 as a team objective at the end of the season? It's oh. achieved the players individually getting awards, top goal scorer, et cetera, et cetera. But as a team, it hasn't got us anywhere. So that mentality has to change. We thought, look, do you know what? We got, I watch Man City. I watch, you know, the, the attractive teams I always watch and play. Man City are attracted to watch. Liverpool are attracted to watch. But Man City, let's... Because again, we're talking about aspiration. We want to try and, and reach that level. Yeah, we want to emulate that. I get on, it. I game get it. to game, how many times you've looked at it? Bernardo Silva starting on the bench, Bro De Bruyne on the bench, um, Aguero before he went. There was numerous games I saw him on the bench, and they were playing someone. Else. And I was thinking to myself, how can you leave De Bruyne on the bench? How can you leave Aguero, this, yeah. um, Bernardo Silva? These are quality yeah. players. But Pep Guardiola had a, another mindset to it, and they had to buy Adapt. into it. And they knew, yeah. but they know also by doing that, Pep Guardiola is putting pressure on himself to achieve results, which I is hear. what Conte would be doing. And that's what we have to aspire to: I Conte hear. to achieve results. And I want, I want the same thing you want. I want it to happen. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because I think it's a, it's something that's going to pan out over the season. It's a new thing. Harry, Harry right. Kane hasn't signed a new contract yet, right? So we want him to do that. How is this juggling of his minutes going to affect that? I don't know. I hope it's all going to be like you see it, Iggy. Yeah. I hope it's all going to be part and parcel of redefining Tottenham as a team that's going to compete for massive honours and everyone's got to play their part. I hope you're right. I we just think that there try. is there is try. a potential where he couldn't necessarily figure out that. Way. Well, if Harry Kane doesn't um, agree to manage his minutes, then he's a hypocrite because he says he wants to win trophies, and the only way he's going to win trophies is if he plays a squad system. That's how yeah. trophies are won. That's how City wins trophies. That's how Liverpool wins trophies. That's how all of the big sides win trophies is through rotation. So if he's not going to be a if he's not willing to manage his minutes and he says he doesn't want to stay at Tottenham because he wants to win trophies, then he's a hypocrite. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't, it does, it doesn't yeah. tell you up because if you notice how many times, Sean, that we've had a situation where the business end of the season, our most important player on the on, on in the team is injured because we've yeah. overused him. Son is being overused, overworked. His touch was getting all heavy. He didn't have the freshness, a mental freshness to but keep on. There were games last season, the tail of the season, where he was run ragged, absolutely exhausted. Yeah, and we and didn't still have the changes. He, well, we had Bergwijn that could have come on, who didn't, right? So there were moments where you could sit there and say, well, Conte had the option, didn't take it then. Hopefully this season is going to be different. I'm with you guys. I want this to be as seamless as you see it to be. I'm just not sure, and I hope I'm wrong. I'm just not sure it's going to be as seamless and... And, and easy and trouble-free as as you guys hope it will be. I think I'm, if it's I'm, not I'm, seamless, I'm, it'll, it'll be because Conte doesn't trust somebody coming in. I just don't think he trusted those players. I don't think he trusted Bergwijn. We had two he... subs last year, Will. We had two subs, yeah. Lucas and Bergwijn. No because Mora came on before Bergwijn did 90% yeah, 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 exactly. of the time. So yeah, yeah, I just don't think he trusted them. Okay, so you think, um, are you think that Memphis Depay coming in or James Madison, that those guys are going to get... Memphis Depay, I'm not really big. I'm not keen on him as an individual player. Period. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay. I feel the same to be honest. But I mean, Richarlison, Even his, his, his stats are incredible a goal every other game and an assist every three games over like a 10 year period. 
his stats are as good as Sonny's. Like, they're phenomenal. Maybe different leagues, I take the point. But if you're looking at a player like Depay and judging him on stats, his stats are world class and for 20 million quid. But I just worry about his personality. Well, on Depay, yeah, he doesn't have a lot are of. We, are we paying Conte enough money to manage players' yeah, yeah. egos like Richarlison? But he has Dubai. to give his blessing now. Uh, when all is said and done, when someone says, Henry, I've got Depay right here. Here you go. He's available. We can get him now for 20 million. Yes or no? You make an informative decision. You do your research. You chat to your people, your trustee, and then you come back to me with, while I'm holding the pie in front of your face and you tell me yes or no. And you can turn around and that's your job to say, do you know what? I've taken all the, 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 the good and the bad. I've weighed it all up and I'll say to you. And and, and, and if you, you were Conte like, Iggy, do you say yes or no to that? Me, me listen... I always say quality. The only thing you have to look at the part is what's his motivation to come to Tottenham? What is it about Tottenham that he and what does he think he could bring to us? We value him as a player. We all say he's a good player. Characteristic, mm. character wise, maybe there's a question mark, no mm -hmm. doubt. But the quality of the player are undeniable. What you would say to him, I'll say to him, what is it that you want coming into Tottenham? You see what's in front of you. You see Son, you see Bergwijn, um, sorry, you see Kane, you see Richarlison, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you yeah. see all of that. Can you come in and be happy as being part of that four or five players? And I or think the answer is no. The main yeah. man? If the answer is no, there's yeah. the fucking door you just come yeah. through. Yeah, Piss yeah. off. That's how, I that's, 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 yeah, I agree with you. Me, I agree with I'd take him on a loan. I'd take him on a loan, but I don't know if I'd want to buy him. 20 million, 17 million quid, 20 it's, million euros, it's, though. It's, 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 it's a tasty fee, isn't it? It's a tasty it, experiment. You know, it's very tempting for that price. Yeah. Very, very But not, not, if he, not at his age. He's 27. He's, he, he, he could, you, you bring him in, you spend 20 million, you pay him a huge amount of wages. I'm sure he's going to want at least 200K a week, right? And then he, he, he's crap. He's got a crap attitude, and you can't move him on. That's right? the part you have to evaluate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I go back to my conversation. What it is that you need to ask the player before he comes on, because he has to make a conscious decision. Once yeah. you've asked him that question, if he says, I'm ready for Tottenham, that means everything that you've put in front of him, he's agreed. So then if he doesn't, uh, if that's been an, an arsehole about it, after you've had that conversation with him, then you can show him the fucking door and say, right, piss off. That's how I see it. For me, right, but you've, if you buy him, though, you can't just show him the no, door. Well, you can you can buy him on a deal <laughs> at seventeen or, or, million quid. You could pay. You could give him a two year contract. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the hit. At seventeen million quid, you earn money on that. You earn money on the pie. What, what? 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 I look at the pie and look at Richarlison. Right? They've both got. Well, they've both apparently got bad attitudes. They're both ego players. But this I don't think Richarlison has a bad attitude, by the way. He's no, no one has ever said that at the club during training or whatever he has a bad attitude. Early doors, though, isn't it? You know, Fans it's, it's moan done. about him diving on the pitch. That's not yeah, a bad he's attitude. Had a he's, never been a, he's never had a selection issue uh, at, right. at Watford or Everton. He's, not, so he's, he's gone from being the best man at a relegation candidate football club to playing, you know... Right, when I'm talking or, about bad attitude, though, I don't mean, like, a, a, an a arrogant prick. I'm talking about doesn't like to train, moans, gets in fights with the managers, or is his. Th no, that's not Richarlison. Richarlison is not one of those. He's always been an automatic starter wherever yeah. he's been, right? So, yeah. yeah. Depay has been he's one done. of those pilot players, right? Yeah. He just got his big move to Barcelona, and they're already wanting to shift him out the door, right? If we want to talk about Barcelona rejects. And Lewandowski. So, where's huh? the pipe in? They've got, if they're bringing in Lewandowski and they've got Abamyang and they've got Farron Torres and they've got Usman Dembele. Where, where right. does the pie? But if the pie, if, that's what I'm saying. If if the pay was the man that they signed, I mean, they went out and bought him for a reason. Then why did they go out and get Obama Yang and Lewandowski if he if he fit the bill? That's what I'm saying. Something about him at Barcelona, yeah, they've Bar said but, not for us. To let's be honest, though, Will, there's a little bit of Barcelona strike me. Uh, the people that are in charge of Barcelona strike me as like a shiny toy kind of uh, ownership. Yeah. Whatever the next fucking cab off the rank is, who's the next shiny object that keeps everyone's attention. You know, just get, like, just keep feeding them. them carrot. Like, for, keep feeding the carrot. I, I think Cook, with Cook, the pie, I think. Go on, go on, go on Kiva. I was just going to say very quickly. Um, for me, it's a simple uh, in and out situation. Uh, Lucas Mora scores a goal every seven games for us. He's still yet to hit twenty league goals in his Spurs career. Yeah, mad. Getting yeah. Depay, who scores one goal every three games on average. Lucas Lucas isn't going to go though, is he? Twenty. 20 Sorry. Million goals. Lucas Sorry? isn't 
Hang on, the no, sorry. Are... Henry was saying Lamella hasn't scored the same uh, 20 goals. Yeah, either Eric yeah, again, again. 20 yeah. Yeah. goals in eight, nearly eight years. So yeah, like, again, why would why would you keep him for goal scoring? You just wouldn't, would you? But are you suggesting, Cooper, with your point that we can bring in Depay and move Lucas on? Is that what your point was? But I'd be fine with that, yeah. But I, don't, um, I, I, I think Lucas has already made it clear he's... He's only got this year on his contract that's guaranteed, and then there's the option that's on the club's behalf to extend it by one year. But he's already said, uh, if they don't extend, I'm going to run it down and I'm going to move on and see what you know, get his last payday. Yeah. And, and if we they can't, do extend, we can't we'll wait again. Yeah, we can't either, either way, the point is, I find to pay uh, to pay an upgrade on Lucas Moore. Yeah, it, it, it might right, be but is he an upgrade on Kuzeski? Um, oh, I think he's in. He's got to be in the mix with him. Different sort of player. But right, um, I mean, where is where is the pie playing? That's what I'm saying. So, so he plays in the middle of the three. Plays on the left. On the left. left. On the left. Yeah. So he will yeah. be. He will Which be. Which is where Madison would also be playing, vying for in a four three. In a three, four, three. People people see that need to understand. Like if the pie comes in, okay, he might not start. But this is a squad game. We've gone from playing a game every seven days. Now we're going to be playing every three or four days when you throw Champions League in. So if Kudelski or Son gets an injury, I'd rather have the pie sitting there than Lucas Mora. That's just the way I look at it. We'll come back to this conversation. In, right, Richardson in would go in though, right? That's yeah, or Richardson. Um, Ellie says, "Do you feel Hoiberg ruined his chances of being a starter because no, he played crap no. yesterday versus Sevilla, or do you feel he won't no. be first choice regardless?" Um, if you believe Pierre, it won't say who you like to see start. First things first, big up Ellie, and once again. Um, Appreciate the super chat. Like every thing. Um, I, I don't, I don't well. necessarily think you know one bad game is going to ruin his career. Oh. Mourinho, Nuno, you know Conte, Mar Mourinho, they all love Hoiberg because he grafts yeah. and he works hard and he's a very yeah. good player. My personal front two I'd like to start in our two midfield would be Basuma and Benson Core because they would just complement each other so so well. You know Basuma is fantastic in the transition between defence and attack. And he can just take players on for days, and you've got the cool, calm, and composure um, with Benson Core. I think that'd be my 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 pair in the midfield. Um, I don't know what you guys think, and appreciate the uh, the donation. I, I don't I, think Hoy Bear will be in. I don't think there's anybody that's going to be a guaranteed starter in that midfield no. right now. I think it's going to be you rotated around. Um, no. To be honest with you, and I'm going to get a lot of heat from this in the comment. I. Even though Hoiber had a horrible first half, um, when he came in against the Korean guys, he was far better. But um, the uh, I didn't think Skip had a good game. Skip was wo Skip was woeful as well. But they've been crowded behind. out. Uh, Skip's behind, man. He's six months behind. Yeah, he, I guess know, so I give him credit so for that. He will take him time. But what the beautiful thing is, we have four quality players now that we can rotate. With a, say, let's say we play with a two in the middle with a spot there. We can rotate. We're not worried about Basuma, Skip, uh, Hoiberg, and Bentenka. We're not worried about that rotation. We're talking about the forward line. That's more of a concern. But we got four players there. We're only ever going to play two at a time. So you can pick any two you want from that. And I'll be very happy with it. I'll be honest with you guys. With any two playing there, from game to game, Conte can decide, this week I'm going to play, the, or this game I'm going to play this two. And the Champions League can go with them two. And then the following week, I can go with a different pair. I'm not saying he has to rotate every single game because there'll be games where he will keep the two but that he's I, I think you'll see a lot of substitution in that midfield yeah, as but, well. But, but yeah, exactly, ben, ben, exactly ben, ben, Without Benson it dropping. A, without Benson dropping. Core the, the had a, Benson Core had a far better start to the second half than the other two did in the midfield uh, in the first half. But for me, in the mm -hmm. first half, Tottenham were... like The, the front three, not Kane, not Sonny, not Richarlison, came back to help. And neither did any of the back three come up and support. Papu Gomez, Fernando and Jordan absolutely dominated the midfield for Seville. You had Acuna coming into support. You had fucking Murr coming back and helping out. Seville played like a fluid dynamic. There was seven or eight smart players press. That's what that they were all doing. over the they place. Were pressing. Team. And they were yeah, it was a brilliantly team. organized team that crowded out Hoiberg, and Skip, they did, when we had the ball, Skip, Skip's passing was awful. Hoiberg lost the ball three or four times. Well, did they have a good game? No they, no, they didn't. But in isolation, it was because they were playing against five or six players that were always within five feet of them every time they got the ball. For me, Benton Core, when he came on, he settled it down a little bit. But I don't think, to Ellie's point, I don't think you can criticise Hoiberg 
no. too much. He, he but, didn't have a good game, but it was because no, nobody else in the team helped out the midfield in that first Yeah, and half. the Conte midfield isn't where the creativity comes from. If people are expecting the ball to come into midfield and then be sprayed out to the attackers to, to score, then they're going to be woefully disappointed every single match because that's not what they're there for. It's not. It's what the wings backs job is, right? And the reason why we're disappointed, people have got to get this in their head. Otherwise, they're just going to keep moaning about in a creative midfielder, attacking midfielder, blah, 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 blah. That's not how this system works. It's not. You got to you gotta understand that, right? It, we, they do not build through the middle, right? The middle's there to relieve pressure. It should come in and then back to the back wide. Midfield is there to substitute to help a the wide players do a one-two and beat the man and break the press that way. That's it. They're not there for creative. Well, do you have do you have a um? Well, this is a question to, well, to everyone and everyone in the chat as well. Do you, is there a slight concern for you with this formation that we're just constantly going to get outrun in the midfield? Because the one game Conte did play a three-man in the midfield. Um, we had we played against Liverpool and they didn't have their, their best eleven. I think they played Morton, who's one of their academy graduates, Henderson and Oxo Chamberlain. We also went for a three man midfield, right? And we yeah, played but Delhi Alley. Right. Yes. That game, we were fluid through the midfield and there was there was control. When we play this double pivot, we'll call it, or the two man in midfield, whenever we come up against a team that has three man in midfield, which is a lot of the time, we get outrun. Yeah. In Champions so, League, yeah, but you, you're Champions telling me you don't think that Conte knows this, right? That's what I'm saying. Why he knows Conte this. never changed formation because he doesn't ever. want to. Well, we can, we, we can, right? even he if will... Conte does know it, man, we can still discuss it as our, right? Our but, opinion, what I'm, but what I'm, but what I'm saying is we can discuss it. You can say that you think Conte is making a mistake by continuing to use the system. I don't think expecting players to operate in a manner that isn't intended is necessarily fair either, right? For example, if you're expecting the two in that three four three to be creative outlets when Conte doesn't even expect them to be that, then that's an unreasonable expectation. That that's that's my point. In, what in, do you mean in, by creative though? Do you mean the person that that is the that, that has the assist, or do you mean the person that has the key pass, or uh, what, the person expecting them to be the ones who uh, create the transition from defense into attack? Because that's not what they're there for. But they are there to, to, to thread passes. They're there to facilitate breaking the press between the the left and right-sided center backs and the wing backs. That's their job. Well, they still, well, still, well, still, well, still got to have a bit of a pass yeah, in them. No, no I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure I agree with that. They're not just there defensively. They're not just there for defensive. They, oh, they are, I didn't say defensively. Facilitate the left center back. Okay? So if you think about it in triangles... Okay, left center backs wide, midfielder wide. I about tri that, the whole triangles thing it annoys me because people will just pick three players on any particular screen and then put a triangle around it. Well, any well, like, any, any three players creates any kind of triangle. It's, it's B it always, Sigma, always, always when he played at Brighton had creativity in his game. He might have only got four or five assists, but that through ball and beating a man and getting into a better position and playing through Trossard, there is creativity there. But it's not it's not a Madison type creativity. What I, I I don't I'm not really a fan of the three four three. I I would rather play a three five two and get an extra body in midfield. Because when we play Man City, Liverpool, and Chelsea, we are going to be dominated, and it's going to be a 35, 40 percent possession game. No, and against those teams, we'll be fine. It's the it's the it's the mid block smart yeah. press teams that we'll have a, a problem with. Playing Brian and I'm not and I'm not season. talking rubbish. You can go watch tactical concepts of of you go study. Rubbish. I'm talking to Chris Garner in the comments. Oh. Uh, the the. Uh, you can go back and anybody can go study Conte systems and study what a Conte 343 is, how it moves, how it breaks down. Uh, I think Tifo did like a 45 minute video with a board and stuff like this on it. Go watch some stuff. Go read some of his books. There's books about Antonio Conte, by the way. People don't read in 2022. But go go look at those things and you can see. There's an audio book. No. <laughs> But there, you can see you can see why and how and for what purpose the two in that three four three works. Or just go watch it. Go think about Chelsea, right? How Conte was used. How the players were used in the midfield when Conte was manager of Chelsea. They're not used as 
creators, meaning spraying passes long into the wingers or the, the attacking mids is actually what, by the way, Conte considers Sun and Cool attacking mids, not wingers. This, this, but, this is this is why there's such a high value Conte places on the likes of Bastoni because he does exactly what you exactly. say. Right? Yeah. He, he does glide into the opponent's th- half of the pitch and he does pick out killer passes. He is exactly. that kind of player. And that's why well, Hold on, hold on. So, so, so you're suggesting that in, a, in an offensive thing, if the midfielders, if Hoiberg or Benson Kaur or Basuma or whoever else, uh, Skippy, has recovered the ball or the ball has been recovered, their job is, in your mind, Will, to simply give the ball back to a left-sided centre-back or a right-sided centre-back to, to, to then find the creativity, the long balls. You're saying there's never a, or that it's not on their shoulders when the opportunity presents itself to thread the past out to the wing forwards or to the wing backs. No, so if, if obviously if it presents, of course, the game is fluid. It's dynamic, right? It's yeah. not, it's not in a box, right? But if you watch Conte's system and if you watch, like, I don't know if anybody took the time to actually watch the live training and watch the drills that they did. Yeah. And you could see that all of the games and the drills that they were doing were all very game specific. And there's specific runs that Conte's players do. You have the, the, the center back plays the ball in the midfield who plays it to the to uh, a forward player who plays the ball back to the yeah, midfielder who then o- plays Ollie, the ball Ollie to Skip the mid. got Ollie Skip got criticized massively yesterday because his attempt to to pass the ball forward he was making progressive passes he made seven or eight in the first 45 minutes and Kobe you, you hopefully you agree with this one you we were calling it in real time right mm-hmm. he failed miserably with a lot of them right he was trying to find um, Lucas Mora on the right, but Acuna kept intercepting, right? Mm-hmm. The, the left back for, for Seville. So to say that, like, and, and if what you're saying is true, then we shouldn't criticize Oliver Skip for stepping outside of his role, right? But he was, but he, was- he got the ball and he was trying to thread the ball and, and, and he did it, he didn't do it well, he did it really badly, but he was, he was definitely, he wasn't, his job wasn't to give it back to. Well, I mean, Davies. if you're going to make the attempt, you have to make a good attempt. Right, you can you can criticize yeah, but, the but, quality but, but, but of what the I'm saying, What I'm saying is there was not. If what you're saying about the training is true, that it was all coming from the back, it didn't stand up to test in the game. When Oliver Skip got the ball, his first thought was to turn and to move it forward. He was poor with his passing. His his incompletions were uh, were high, but it doesn't it doesn't stack up to what you're suggesting that that his role would be in a four, in a three four three. Okay, so what I'm saying, the role is in a three four three. Isn't that necessarily this midfielders don't play the ball forward? Obviously, if the ball comes into them in midfield, like I said, they're there to facilitate breaking the press. So when the ball gets played out to the right or the left side center back, and that person then gets pressed, the midfielders are there as an angle so that you can play it diagonal. They then turn and play it wide to the wing back who should be running up the pitch. It's all about one touch one touch, then two touches. One touch, then two touch. One touch, then two touch. Okay. It's just the way that Conte works. You can watch it in the training. You can look at the tactical videos of it. Okay. It's he. Yes, he can turn and make passes. Or this is a key play. I think you saw it a couple of times live in the game. I can't remember if it was one Sevilla or Korea, but basically where Hoiber in the midfield or Benicor in the midfield plays the ball into Kane, who plays the ball back to them, and then they play it to Son, who's making a run breaking through, right? That is a Conte one-touch tactic. No, I hear what That's you're saying. You I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I agree with you. I, I do agree with you. It just it didn't it didn't stack up with with when you look at. I thought yesterday in the first half, I thought that Hoiberg was doing the responsibility. I think that Skippy was like, got Skippy had a really tough first half off the ball. I didn't see him do very much at all. I think he was lackluster. I think he was pressed and he failed to recover the ball when he was pressed. And when he wasn't pressed, I think his passing was, was poor. I'm just, I'm challenging a little bit on the idea that um, his job is to, to defend against the press. And I, I take your point that it is. Not defend when, against, we'll, facilitate breaking. Yeah, the press. Quite, and that's fine. But when we did break it down, when he got the ball, when we, when we got the ball and he had the moment, his, his 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 passing was was awful, and that, that that doesn't add up to what you suggested was. Yeah, but the that's role. not what. I, that's fine. You can criticize. I'm talking about not being creative. Not creative. Not creative. I'm not creative. I'm, I'm, I'm right. challenging. I'm challenging. Not criticizing. Yeah. Criticize. So playing that long ball into wide or over the back line or that through ball and behind. If the opportunity is there, of course people are going to take it. The game is dynamic. It's fluid, right? But his job is not to create shooting opportunities or scoring opportunities. That's not his job. Whereas, like, if you're ten. 
your job is to create yeah. scoring opportunities, right? If you're a Madison playing in a Leicester system, your job is to create scoring opportunities for your strikers. If what That's you're your saying job. is if what you're saying is true, then I still think that we're going to even with the four players we've signed or the the, four, the new four we have in midfield. I, if what you're saying is true, then we are still going to massively struggle against the teams where we drop those twenty four points. Not now, if that, we I, have competent wingbacks. But do we? That's the question. Do we in have Perisic? We do. Okay, but if Perisic gets injured. Well, you know, yeah, we, 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 I'm not sure. All of our own. We don't. We, let, let's be honest. Regulon looks like he's going to go, right? It looks like, you know, they've went on the preseason tour, yeah, severe and interested. It looks like Regulon's gone, right? So, so if we can raise 35, 40 million euros for him, uh, fine. There's a centre back at Sevilla, I'd take in a heartbeat in Kunde. People say yeah. he's only five foot nine. So is Cannavaro. So is <laughs> Lissandro Martinez, he's five foot eight, and he can, he can jump. Right. So, so, so if. <laughs> Um, he doesn't go, and Perisic does get an injury. I can't imagine a 33-year-old is going to play 40, 50 or game season. So then we fall all our dependence on Ryan Sessegnon. The other side, we've got Jed Spence, Matt Doherty, and Emerson Royale. It looks like Emerson Royale is going to go, right? The other think? teams are interested in Spain. So you think all he's going to go, our, do you? Uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident that, the, well, Please. I'm fairly confident one of our wingbacks on the right side will go. I yeah. can't just. I, I did a video earlier with with Sim from um, yeah, I watched uh, it, Tottenham yeah. TV, and they, they, they he was saying that um, he, he thinks they might have all three in a constant rotation. But then I was like, okay, it's a constant rotation, but you need to build up a relationship on the pitch. If we if every single game we're changing a right back, you know, Romero is going to be thinking, what the fuck's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I personally, I think um, I think Emerson Royale will go. So then we have four wing backs. We've only one None out of them and out can wing defend. back. Yeah, one out and out wing back who's very good at going forward in Perisic. But I'm not. I'm not convinced yet. I I, I personally think that if you're going to sell one of Doherty or or Emerson, just simply because if we're trying Lucas Mora at right wing back, let's presume that there's some intent to see if he can handle it. And we've got Jed Spence in there, who we know is a, at least at the lower level. Can 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 do some creative things and move forward and with the ball and he can run at players. Doherty we know is better offensively than defensively. Of the four that can play on the right, excluding Perisic as a utility, Emerson's the only one that has probably won the benefit of the doubt defensively. Doherty, the reason why a lot of people give Doherty the benefit of the doubt now is because of the the chemistry that he forged very quickly with Kulusevski, and that's important. Uh, it's not something to be sniffed at, but. If you're going to try Lucas Moore at right wing back and Jed Spence is probably a little bit more, you know, going forward than he is, def even though I think that he could also be fairly handy defensively, but Doherty certainly isn't good defensively, right? So for me, if, if what you're saying is true, I personally think if one of Doherty or Emerson goes, I would imagine it'd probably be Doherty that gets moved on. I, 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 I don't know, Sean. I, I think Doherty has a very good relationship with the players in the football club. He's very close to Kane, Dyer, and Larice. He's like they're all like that, you know. I, I fair think, point. Yeah, fair point. I think out of them, I think Emerson Royale. I mean, I, I'll be honest. At times, Emerson Royale can do some good things, but at times, you know, I look at him and go, "How are you, a professional footballer?" Like the, the pass, <laughs> the pass last yeah, year, yeah. Yeah. Sanchez. I'm sitting there going, "How are you not making that pass?" We have got a couple of super chats just quickly. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Ellie's coming again. Um, no, I read that one earlier. Um, I have lost it. Apologies. I will quickly find it. Um, so yeah, well, while you're doing that, um, I agree about Emerson. I, I think with Conte system, and Will was explaining it pretty well there, I think. Um, so big up Will mm. rather than criticising him. Um, yeah, the, the wing backs, you should look at them more as being midfielders, stroke wingers. The, the defensive side of the game is secondary. Exactly. It, of course, it's a bonus to have that. And if you've got the athleticism and the acceleration and pace to go with it so you can get back, like Kyle Walker used to do, that's a great thing. You've got a great wing back then. But primarily, you have got to affect the attacking third of the pitch. Do you give credit, Cooper, to Emerson's defensive area ability? We spoke about this many times well, on my channel. Yeah, Emerson's fantastic. Why, why, why do you want that in a wing back? Because, we, <laughs> because, because, because Romero, if you're going to criticise Romero on anything, he's not that good in the air. Right, he really isn't. 
Right? And rem- uh, Emerson last season was, I know we had this conversation with on my channel as well last season, but Emerson is, as far as a wing back goes, he is flawless in the air defensively from corners, from crosses, back post clearances. Like, that's just say, what, say what you want to say about Emerson going forward. I take it on board. I'm not a big fan. I'm not like a Emerson like fanboy, but call it, you know, be fair. I, I'll agree. I'll agree he's that really he's, very very good. Good he's, he's good, good at good clearing the ball with his head. But that isn't an attribute that, that is beneficial to us in a Conte wingback system. So for me, while that is true, it's it doesn't matter as in my opinion of how effective he can help how well he can help us because that is like a thing that's back there in the back pocket that I'm not really focused on right the key things for us is him his dribble his ability to take on a man one v one and his ability to cross the ball into the box importance one importance two then importance three becomes defending and then heading being a part of that okay. because he's not good in a 1v1 defender. He's not a good 1v1 defender at all. Neither's Doherty or neither's... Right. Uh, but what I'm saying is so if the only yeah. thing he's got in his book is being able to clear balls from headers, oh. that's it's, a very it's, small it's, piece it's of the fine. puzzle. It's fine. You can prioritize it where you want in the list, but it is something that we should give him credit for. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's a part of his game which he's, he's good at. Um... Then we, I've found the super chat. Sorry, apologies. Uh, and he's come in and said, You work so hard, like Hoyer though, Camry. Appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. You're a true Spurs fan that plans your show so well and lets discussion flow so well and lets everyone have a good share of chat. That's what I like to do. I like when you see it when, when Will and Sava have some sort of disagreement. Me and Iggy or me and Stell will either sit here and just, just let them go at it and we'll just sit there on the sideline like a couple of cheerleaders. Um, <laughs> appreciate that. And, um, uh, frankly, says, do you, do you think Conte will ever play just two centre backs? No, not no. without centre backs. To play a no. two at the back formation, you've got to be a Van Dyke, Canate, a Diaz, that level defender. Rudiger, I don't think we have the defenders. He at the may do, do it that. at times when it just to get something done in a match, but he will never start a match with two at the back. No. Hasn't in however many years he's been a man. It does result once. though during a game if we're chasing a game into a four two four. He does do yes, that. Yes, four two four if um, he wants to be yeah. more attacking. But that's that's like a secondary and do you know what? Regarding um Lucas Moore, I wanted to bring it up earlier on. I think in that in that game because he doesn't have all the players available to him that he's brought in, he is now working on plan Bs and plan Cs. And I think someone like Lucas Moura and Richarlison on the same side, I can never see starting um, with those two. In, in. So I see that as already he's thinking about plan Bs and plan Cs to put in place in, due, in, 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 in games that he feels that he has to change it up. Because I think Kuliszewski is still right now. And you can see that we had a better balance when Kuliszewski came on. You can see there's schemes and drills that those three up front, they've got a little bit more know-how. That's not to uh, Richarlison's demerit. I just think that Richarlison needs to learn. He just doesn't uh, know yet. Like, yeah, he for doesn't example, know. And that, that, yeah. That's exactly it. That's and exactly that's the key, other. too. I think I think watching that game and you can see how Sun, like if you remember, uh, maybe, maybe most people don't do this. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that I'm weird or something. I don't know. But I, I tend to watch players positioning very closely and I make notes, physical and mental, about where players play, what they do when they drop back. And if you, want, if you notice, if you go back and watch the games from last seasons, especially the ones that we did well and we won, you had Sun um, and, 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 and Kulu dropping into almost a 5-4-1 type of defensive yeah. formation. And they helped support it. They basically made like like, like a, a, a Gangan press a deep, a deep Gangan press on that right-hand side. Anytime the ball went into the wings, you had the, the fullback and Sun and or Kulu depending on what side it was, team double-teaming a, a wide player there trying to force a, an error, a, a ball played to midfield that's intercepted, yada, yada, yada. You look at Richarlison, and you looked at Brian Hill, and you looked at other players who fill in that position, and they weren't doing that. They weren't in the right spot. Sun was in his right spot over there, but Richarlison was too high, or he was too narrow, or he was too yeah. wide. He wasn't, like, for, Kulu and Sun were like clockwork almost mirror images of each other on the opposite side of the pitch, you know, it, positionally off the ball. Yeah. 
other players I just don't think have learned that yet. And so for me, that's why like Brian Hill, I don't necessarily care about how good of a dribble was when he's completely out of positioning. Conte's systems are very rigid and people almost have to be a little bit robotic. And if you're out of position, you screw stuff up for other play. Your other teammates now have to make up for your, you being not where you're not supposed to be. I think there was some, cause you could hear Conte on the sideline, right? Push, press, get up. We're Charleston up, 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 get up, move up. Like, I try to listen for those things where whose names are being called out. Are they in position? Or sometimes when someone was out of position, get up, get up, get up. You got to be mindful of that. And I think where Charleston's just got to learn the system. I think it's a completely different system than what he's yeah. got to do. It's, but, it's a learning curve. That would happen. Yeah, it's a learning curve. He'll get it. He'll get it. But I, I would like to think that with Charleston will be used more where Kane is right now then rather than what I, I think in games away from home when we need to press or even at home perhaps where we need to press from the front I think Richarlison would be a much better because Kane doesn't do it he doesn't do it anywhere near enough um, his tackles and in I, midfield are really good too yeah and exactly yeah. so there'll, there'll be games where we will start with Richarlison perhaps not with Kane and I'm absolutely fine with that. And I'm also saying this because someone is asking, will we play with two centre-backs? Not with two centre-backs. I think we'll stay with the three, but we could play with two up front. There will be games yeah, where we, we will I, have I, I Kane and Richarlison or Kane and Son, whoever, we will play with two forwards. I'm, like like we, Latara we and have, we, Yeah, we have the flexibility now to do that. And in Europe, to answer the further question earlier on about playing a two-pivot in midfield, we will have to change that up in Europe because a lot of teams in Europe, Sevilla, Sevilla taught us that we need to play with a three in midfield. How we do it, if we either add an extra midfielder in or we use the, 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 the wing backs to be a part of the three or Kane drops off, we will have to resort to it because otherwise we're going to get outnumbered in Europe. And, and teams like Sevilla, who are a very well respected team in, in, in European football, are an absolute example of how teams play in midfield and if you don't have it right you will get you will get the run around and that's what happened the other night with um with skip and hoybe so i i completely agree um, that's why i think too like benton core and basuma are going to be huge together in the midfield because flexibility you, man their, their ability to right. dribble out of a press right now the hoybe only option to break a press is to pass same with 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 skip they don't have the ability on the ball to dribble through a press Basuma has that ability. Bentancourt has that ability, but not as good as Basuma. I think when you start to see those two, that's why Bentancourt looked better when he came on, was because he's able to turn. He's able to dribble out of a press, then play people in to continue the transition moving forward. Hoybeer doesn't have that. He's got to pass. He's got to pass quick. So if he makes a mistake in his pass, it looks way like, you know, those those two hospital passes that he played back into the backfield that almost cost us goals. Uh, that you... I think when you see Basuma and Ben Takor together, it's going to look a lot better. It's going to—I think you're going to see that Conte system play out because we can when the when it does play out. There, there were teams who played a a smart press against us, like Newcastle in the second half of the season. When we do when we do our job, still it can go well, right? The problem is is when they don't, it can go really bad in a Conte system. Yeah. I, I agree, Matt. I think I think you're absolutely spot on. I think, I think that's why Batsuma's become a really important signing as well because he yeah, is yeah. that press resistance all player. It's the closest we've had to Dembele since he's left. Anyway, hopefully, you, you yeah. everything you've just said, I said uh, two videos ago. Uh, just quickly, people, we've got nearly 600 um, tuning in. Um, absolutely mad support. Make sure you go over to Sean, uh, Will, and Iggy and subscribe. Um, we are quickly going to, for some reason, I've been doing this a lot recently, but we are going to do a giveaway. Um, all you've got to do, I got this from Wall the other day, is write Spurs Corner in the chat and you will be entered. And you have to like the videos. All you have to do is write Spurs Corner. As you can see on the screen, there's currently zero entries. Um, and <laughs> for asking, um, the giveaway will be done via PayPal. Um, I think, I can't remember who won last stream. I think it was... Oh, yeah, PO block one last string. Um, all you've got is only one entry so far. I'm going um, to play. Well. All you've got to do is write Spurs Corner like that and like the video, and it will be drawn uh, later on in the stream. So we're currently on 200, uh, 304 likes. So I'm expecting at least 400 before we draw this. 
Um, anyone can enter. Um, just show some support in the stream. Go and subscribe to everyone's channels. Sean, Will, and Iggy. All the links are down below. Um, and go and show them support. Um, and also subscribe to this channel. We're approaching 7,000 subscribers, which is absolutely we obscene. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely obscene. But yeah, so all you've got to do is write Spurs Corner and like the video. Um, Henry, a, a little update on your um, the pie for 20 million. 345 votes. Yes, 58%. No, 42%. That's a little update there. I thought, oh, I thought it's interesting because it I voted yes on it. And yeah, in my mind, right. I, earlier on, I was like, nah. But no, I voted yes because someone made the point. Just I think it was you, Iggy. So just get him in. Get him in and we'll figure it out. Just get them in, Sean. <laughs> well, <laughs> players, <laughs> let them in. We've got a manager there that's uh, earning shitloads of money. Let him worry about the headaches. We as fans, yeah, 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 say, yeah. get them in. Yeah, well, he's paid the big bucks for, right? Exactly. Yeah. What, um, 100%. Um, Iggy, I, wanted, I spoke to you um, just before the stream went live. Um, I want to get your thoughts on um, your other football club that's in your heart, and that is AC yeah. Milan, and they are interested in Jacket yeah. Tanganga. Now, this obviously broke in January that they were interested. Um, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to be it's going to be a starter for you guys. Um, I know on the left hand side you've got a fullback that I would take in a heartbeat. Yeah, Teo Hernandez. Yeah. He is a serious player, um, yeah. but on the right hand side, um, or even as a backup centre back. You are looking at Jaffa Tanganga. Now, as I said, this broke in January. And there was a couple of sources, not very reliable. Now, the likes of Alistair Gold, Sky Sports, and a few others have come out. What do you make of that? Um, I don't get do you think it'll be a loan, it. or do you think it'll be a permanent if he does go? Um, well, it, to be honest with you, it depends, it depends what Conte wants to do with him. Personally, how I see it is Tanganga should go on loan, but he should go on loan to a Premier League team. Because for me... He has to play. At AC Milan, he would be, let's say if he's used as a centre-back, he would be one of the four players playing in a two, two so oh. the back four. So they've already got uh, Simon Kia there. They've got Kalulu. They've got Fio, Fio, uh, Fikayo Tomori there. So he would be the fourth centre-back. So he would rotate amongst the... So Fikayo Tomori... And uh, and Simon Kier started the last season. Simon Kier picked up an injury, who kept him out for the rest of the season. Then Kalula became that centre back. So Tanganga right now, um, he will be one 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 four one of the four players as centre backs for AC Milan, uh, or he could be used as a, as a, as a right back. But then they've got Calabria that starts there every week. Tao Nandes is on the left hand side. He's a regular starter there. I just from Tanganga's point of view, it just doesn't make any sense to me why he would go there to be a fourth choice, third, fourth choice. He's in no different situation than what he currently is at the moment. For me, he has to go to a club, go alone, where he's guaranteed the next amount of games and play regular football. For me, the only way he can stay close to in Conte's radar is by staying in the Premier League. Look, Maldini's obviously seen, some, seen something in Tanganga. He's obviously seen it. He took a punt on uh, Fikayo Tomori, who was surplus the requirement at Chelsea. He was sold for £28 million and he's ended up being an absolute fundamental part of Milan's back four, who went on to win the league last season. So that was, you know, Chelsea's mistake. So Maldini's obviously uh, he's seen something in him and... and and he wants to bring him in. It sounds like he wants to. I didn't believe in it. I'll be honest with you, Henry. When I first read it, I thought, nah, this is rubbish. I, I'm not, I'm not well, buying what, into what this. What is he seeing? Because no one really knows. I don't know. Uh, mate, do you know what? Is. He says he... Back, is he a right back? I, I also feel Jaffet's been mismanaged. I feel like he should have had a loan he's early on in the, his career. There's a team of, of you know, he's got, he's got him, Ricky Masara and Moncada as part of the setup they got of in, in, in going out in Europe. And identifying young players, young talents, and who may be struggling or not being given a chance. Which is what happened with Teo Nandes. Teo Nandes was at Real Madrid. He wasn't getting a look in. Maldini mm. went over to Real Madrid, identified him and thought, you know what, you come over to Milan, I'll make you a star. He saw something in him that he thought he could go on. Now he's worth triple the amount. So maybe in Tanganga, in the first starts, he maybe he liked him. He saw something that he liked when he first did well at Tottenham. 
And now he's seen that he's struggling. And maybe he's seen, seen a little angle there. Maybe you can get him at a knockdown price. Listen, at the moment that we're talking about a loan, but if the opportunity is there with uh, with an option to buy, I'm sure he would he would do Maldini would, would take that. But from Tanganga's point of view, I just don't know what this move means for him because he wouldn't be starting. And surely he's got to pick a team where he's going to get more starts than not. Because otherwise it just doesn't make it make sense. I'd like him to be loaned to someone like a palace or someone like a someone like right in the Premier League. Any 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 mid table team, Wolverhampton and Ful Fulham. And, Fulham would be a good Fulham. Just anywhere where he's going to get more games than not, because he needs it. He's his last two, three seasons of kind of like you know he has that massive rise, and then it just it's just been a nosedive since, like through injuries and and, and mistakes and just loss of confidence, man. Because let's be oh, honest, he's making agree, a lot mate. of mistakes. Yeah. That Chelsea one he made last, uh, you know, it's, there's loads of games he made a lot of mistakes and, and, and which wasn't like him because he against Liverpool that when he made his debut it was fantastic. This, this is what I was saying. I feel like he has been mismanaged. I feel like he should he should have been sent out on loan. But um, listen, people, we've only got 70 entries on the giveaway so far, and there's 612 people in the chat. All you have to do is like the video and write down Spurs Corner. And while you're doing that, subscribe to Sean, oh, Iggy, and Will, and eventually subscribe to Kuva when he. What's the price? Just saying via PayPal. I usually do this every Spurs Corner stream. I, I'm, I'm, you're not expecting a grand in your account, by the way. It's not going to be anything like that. <laughs> oh. Uh, in that case, I want to retract my entry. Do I put, um, do I put in um, Spurs Corner? Uh, how do I do that? How do I, how do I retract? Um, <laughs> what, um, if, the, if our window was to finish like this, what would you give our transfer window out of 10? So not thus far. But this no, so if we were to not sign any more players, right? So just the and that, that's it now. After yeah, so window, hy hypothetically, we, we signed Perisic, Basuma, all the players. You know, we've signed Richarlison, right? If our window, this to everyone in the chat as well, was to finish like this, which you could six, six, oh, I'll give it a six. Yeah, I, I had it at a seven. Until we signed Richarlison, and then I, uh, then I dropped it to a six, and then that was in the presumption that we were going to sign more. There was more time to come, but I still don't think we've improved in the major areas we needed to. I still think we needed a. Uh, I still, I still think we need. I, I'm, I'm happy with everyone. I'm happy with everyone, but you know, so far. But if it stops like this, we haven't really improved. I don't think in the right wing back spot. Well, uh, the, the guy we brought in is an unknown entity. He might be good. He might be an absolute shit show. We just don't know, and. Uh, long lay, yeah. Look, I think he'll do a good job to help Davies out. I don't think I think we need somebody else for me. The biggest risk, long lay's good at left side of center back. I think he'll do a great job, but uh, what we don't have in the center or the right wing or the right side of center back is a backup. If Romero goes down injured, get day one, if he breaks his ankle day one, or if Dyer does, we've got uh Sanchez coming back in. So, uh, for me, that is. Not good enough. Not That's good why enough. I would say bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. Yeah, bring him in. So for that I mean, if, if, if it finishes like this, it's been a, it's been a decent window. Uh, it's a six, but if we can get one more really talented right side or somewhere a central side of centre back, whoever it is, I'm not even going to bother with the names. It's we all know the Kim. Names. I've been hearing about this Kim guy. Uh, I, I don't yeah. know too much about him. Uh, maybe, will maybe share some he's, light. He's going to be. Guy. He's just. Isn't he just going to be a, a, a money maker? Like, he's, a, a a, he's a Korean. He's a marketing Korean money he's maker. Marketing he's, I mean, he's more than that. He's a good player. Um, I don't know. Is he somebody? Is he somebody that? Um, like it's going to be outstanding. No, is he as is he as competent as Davies and Dyer is? Yes, it's more of a, a body game. For, like, is he is he better than Sanchez in, in filling in for some of those players? Yeah, I mean he, he's big, okay. he's tall, he's strong. You want to talk about air that, game? He's in that mold, he's in that. Sanchez yeah, but he's he, he's not a. Bremer, Bastoni, uh, oh, and Dicka, okay, Gavardial level, but he is at a, he is at a Dyer Davies. By the Sanchez. way, I missed, I missed a lot a lot today, guys. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I saw a picture of Davis in in a boot. Is that serious or what? what what's how how long is he going to be out for? 
No, he has he hasn't had a, he had a small scan. Um, okay. but they're waiting. I saw, I saw him in that in that you know the boot that they wear the cast mm. boot. And I yeah, so he's had a small that. scan apparently. Um, okay. they're gonna when we get back into the UK, they're gonna take it from there. Um, but uh, yeah, he probably won't play to the start of the season, which isn't a massive blow because we have got Lingley um there, so he probably will start against Southampton. Um, depending on how bad his injury is, we have got a quick super chat. Um, and big yourself up, uh, Johnny. Be good. Back in the streams once again, and he says, uh, "Hi guys, great panel as usual. I think Maldini sees that Jefferson Kanga is uh, decent defensively, one v one, aggressive and versatile. But agree, he needs game time to develop. He's also homegrown, so he needs to replace that." Um, big yourself up for the super chat once again. Thanks for tuning in. Um, listen, if Maldini, arguably the greatest defender of all time, maybe with I'm going to start, you know, talking about Italian players now. Nesta, Baresi, players like that, once in a lifetime defenders. If he's coming out and saying that I like Jaffa Tanganga, then clearly he's seeing something that we're not, right? That's um, yeah, that's either a worry or Maldini's just lost the plot. One of the other he's smoking <laughs> some really fucking strong shit. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I'll be honest with you, it's, it's a surprise. It surprised me when I heard about it because I, I thought the same things. I thought, what does he see in him that we haven't, that we clearly haven't? And more to the point, I don't see what Tanganga is going to earn other than a clear a life, you know, it's a different experience, new reality, new different country. I get all of that. But from a playing point of view, there's not much different he will experience because you'll be entering the same similar situation that he's now. A, a back four that's already there. They've won the league last season, so they're going to carry on with that back four. And Simon yeah. Kier is now back from injury, so that's now five players he has to compete against. Well, well, I, don't, I don't, I don't get it. it. Doesn't just make any sense for me. But yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense to me either, mate. It really doesn't. Um, just quickly for everyone saying what is the giveaway? It will be done via PayPal. It's just going to be a little small kind of saying thank you for always tuning in. Um, Iggy has got to shoot very, very shortly. Um, Iggy, have you got any content coming up this week apart from yeah. the usual? Well, uh, usual stuff. Yeah, good morning, Tottenham Away will be on uh, every day this week and tomorrow night we will be doing a stream um, Tottenham Away with the JP, myself, and then we have guests on for which one of them is Kuba right here will be. And he's, been, he's been joining us the whole summer so it's, it's just lovely having him on and we'll be talking, finally we get to talk because so often we've spoken about just transfers and, and rumours and this and now we've got some football, we've had two games and we could get our teeth a little bit into that. And, of course, we've got Rangers coming up on Saturday. So, we'll begin com you know, conversations about that. And what else we can expect? Our seventh signing, perhaps, uh, coming through the door between now and then. Who knows? So, there's, there's going to be plenty to, 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 to talk about, for sure. So, that's that's coming up. But there, there'll, there'll always be content coming out pretty much every day in our channel, mate. But yeah, I listen as always. I, I love, I love coming. Uh, I love coming here. I enjoy spending time with you guys and talking about Spurs. And big up to absolutely everyone in the chat. It's really lovely to reading all your comments. And once we got the initial part of messing about with uh, with Will and the expressions coming, I mean, it, it's, uh, the comments have got so so much better, much more um, more flowing. So I really That's enjoy because that one individual has been banned. So. Yeah, you cannot attack expressions. <laughs> he didn't. He I didn't even attack that. him. No, you didn't. He just, he just, uh, I don't know. We're not going back there again. We're not doing this again. <laughs> we can do no, it again. No, no, yeah, no. I'll do it. I'll, first of all, I'll say whatever I want to say. I don't care who it he is. He says what he um, wants. He says what he right. wants. Will Stewart, he says what he wants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my, my uh, rating on the season two was 6.25 so far on the transfer window. If we, if it ends. 6.5. 6 I'll say 6.5. Five as well. I missed. Yeah. I missed the. I missed the other guys. So who, who have you gone through so far? Iggy, you um, said six point so five. Did you? Six point five. I'll be, listen. If it ended today, I'd be disappointed. I would. I, I, I'll Same. know two ways about that. Yeah. Because I. I want. I want better things. Best right. window ever, but we're still disappointed. That's what, that's, that, no, 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 that's no, like no, the no, expectation. No, 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 no. <laughs> If it stopped, if it stopped with this, I'd be disappointed because. The aspirations that I have for us, yeah, I get it. Uh, as the the expectation of the yeah, yeah, yeah. club are far bigger, it. and this cannot it. be enough. So, so for I, me, I, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you one hundred percent. For me, I actually have a spreadsheet, and each position uh, <laughs> is weighted. To... Will never let you down, man. There's always going to be a spreadsheet, always. Yeah. And he's looking yeah. at it right now. I am. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you are. He actually gave he actually gave expressions oozing a seven out of ten for commentary, nine out of ten for enthusiasm, a two out of ten for cultural naivete. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but we've got uh, so basically, there's eight positions that I think that we needed to fill this window. So you know, ten divided by eight is one and a quarter. Uh, how well did that the, the signing fill the need for that position? Uh, you give a subjective weighting on that, and that's how I've rated it. But so like left wing back, for example, Perisic, one and a quarter, full full points. Um, long lay on left center back, you know, 0. 0.75. Um, Spence at right wing back, 0. 0.5. Um, but so Suma can... gets you how many points? Two points? 1.25. So we needed two center mids. Um, we've only signed one. Um, so 1.25, and the other one gets a zero because we haven't signed anybody. Uh, center back, we need a center back. Zero, we haven't signed anybody. Um, does, your, does your spreadsheet also include ex out outgoing? Uh, no, that's just incomings. Guys, right, I'm gonna shoot. So, I'm gonna shoot. Outgoing will be. Yeah, by the way, I want to ask you guys some. Should we be looking at a new goalkeeper? Question mark. I, 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 maybe that could be discussed as well with you guys. I just want to. I will be listening to you guys while I'm nodding off. I will be listening. I, I'll have you on my ears. I want to hear about the goalkeeper situation. Iggy, Iggy, before you go, but I have to know what is it that you do for a living that gets you up at three o'clock in the morning? It's four. It's going to be four in the morning, mate. Uh, well, I work for local government, so because of the heating conditions, that it's going to be super 36, 37, 38 degrees tomorrow. I have yeah. to. There's going to be they're starting earlier than normal. So we can get them to start earlier their shift, so they can. By the time, by the time it gets really unbearable, they've already got. You work, you work outdoors, then, do you? Yes, outdoors, and obviously the conditions meaning that we have to start super early tomorrow yeah, morning. I get it. I get it. So that, that's all it is. But guys, I will have you in my ears, and I'll be interested in what you guys think about the goalkeeper. Should we? Am I being too harsh, maybe, on Luis in these two games because it is preseason, and I agree with Chris, by the way. He is a top, top goalkeeper in the Premier League. Putting a worldie, putting a worldie against yeah, uh, no, no. Seville. This is his first, in the first game against the uh, the other team, the uh, All Stars. He, he, he Mine is not a him. criticism of Luis. I'm just asking the questions. Do we need to start looking at that because Luis can't go on forever, guys? That's yeah. all I'm saying. All right, guys. I bid you all good night. Take care. Cheers, Iggy. Mate, thank you. What well, um another goalkeeper that I, I was interested in and I got absolutely ripped to bits was Nick Pope. But obviously, yeah. now he's joined Newcastle. Why did you have uh, bits for that? That was amazing. Cool. Should have got him twelve million. He's a good guy. He's a good goalkeeper, but he's not. Still. He's not what we need. We need a. Oh, um... He would have been amazing. Free no. transfer for Foster's not bad business, but when a week later, like Pope goes for twelve million. Two years ago. Pope for a backup would have been fine. I'm talking about as a for, as a number one. Right. Pope could be the next number one though. Foster won't ever be. But I, Pope I think be. Pope's one Foster of the best be shot Pope shot stoppers in the league. Um, yeah, but. He's not good on the floor. Right. That's, um, that's one need. of the criticisms he's got of Hugo. If you replace yeah. him with somebody that also isn't good on the floor. Will's got a hard on, though, for the fellow from Wolves, haven't you, mate? What's his name? Jose Sarr. Yeah, mm. you love him, don't you? No, no one compares to him. Nothing well, I mean, there are other goalkeepers that compare to, to him. There are other players that compare to him, but <laughs> nobody compares him at his price. The fact that they went in and got him for less than £10 million and he ended up statistically outperforming Allison and Ederson in the positions and the things that they're good at. Uh, yeah, no, I get it. Amazing. Yeah, he's, he's a good keeper. Good keeper. He wasn't for sale, but Pope was. Uh, for me, like... Well, he was for sale last summer. That's the problem. That's why I'm, that's why I'm angry. This summer? Last summer, he was... Oh, last summer. Well, what what are your thoughts? Did, did either yeah. you or any of you like the... Um, is it Meslier, the Leeds goalkeeper? I could be butchering Mel his name. No, dude, Melier, that little yeah. kid. Melier, yeah. Only twenty one uh, years old. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. look he... like he has hair on his legs yet. <laughs> I think a couple of seasons ago I thought yeah, he's got real talent, but he struggled. He's older than he looks. Um yeah, I'll, I'll still like him. I, I think he's got a lot of talent. Who bought Ooh. the Irish keeper from Man City? So, I think was it was it South, Southampton? Southampton, Southampton, yeah. South, Southampton gave, gave us Foster and they bought the guy from the Irish keeper. Mm. I forget his name, it's a weird name. Uh Bazumu. Zuma, uh, yeah, ask yeah. Aaron Dub, he'll know. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he's, um, there's a lot of people talking big things do, about do, him. Do you think there's just a not a massive amount of goalkeepers out there that are you know well first available and are actually that quality? Like They're out there, there's. Just... I've yeah. been a fan of uh, I've been a fan of Martinez from from Villa for a while, and yeah, everyone keeps turning yeah. those up. But he, I think he's a great. He's good, but he's he's a bit old. He's thirty. 
Yeah. He's still got, yeah. you know, four or five years. 28. 10 years, 10 years, right? 30s, the new 20 for... We've got another six years then, right? So. As, as much as we don't like to admit it, um, them locked down the road picked up a pretty good goalkeeper, didn't they, Ramsdale? No. Ooh. No. He's up there. no Ram- Ramsdale's... Ma- I think Ramsdale's massively overhyped. I think they, they, they look at him and think they've got, I don't know, something special. I, I he just know. makes good saves for the cameras. Yeah. But you know what? Like, honestly, my opinion on goalkeepers is is so threadbare thin because I don't know what it takes to be a good goalkeeper. I don't know how to spot a good goalkeeper apart from what you see. But, um, look, yeah. For me, um, I, I don't know what a good goalkeeper is. Anyway, do you want my more controversial take on the transfer window this uh, this far? Then? Go on. Go on, let's go. Not thus so far. Have... Not, th- not thus far. Not as far. is. As not is. As no, is, it... Cooba. Uh, if, if it's going <laughs> to end right now, I'd only give it a three. Wow. Because yeah. we'd be failing to take an opportunity we have this season. Jesus. We'd be leaving ourselves short in areas of the pitch where we could get a couple or even three quality signings. I mean, international sort of ready uh, uh, class players. Right wing back slot, central defence, another left wing back maybe. Um, to give us that push to really close the gap on the top two rather than just trying to keep above what's below us at the moment. And if, if that becomes if it becomes that sort of disappointment level where we're looking at the people around us, Chelsea are there for the taking at the moment. Unless they start making stellar signings, and quite a few of them, we should be looking to go above them, pull clear, because uh, they fell away badly last season and now they've lost players as well. If we miss out on this, this opportunity because we haven't got two or three more quality players in this window... It becomes a bad window for me. Um, despite having some good players in there, you can look at individuals and say it's good. But if you look at the overall picture, we are supposed to be looking to close the gap on Man City. And if we don't do make those extra signings, the window becomes very, very disappointed. Um, so I know still Phil Will likes to look at it statistically, and I think it's quite a fun way of doing it. Um Either way, I think everybody would say if it ends now, it's not as uh, awe-inspiring. It's, 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 a, it's a bit of a failure, isn't it? Considering yeah. there's still a lot of um, a lot of issues in the squad. Um, Johnny B. Good's come in and said, Kinman J, I think that's how it's pronounced, or Jai, is like Maguire, but more yeah. solid and aggressive. He can be rash and take risks, but he's uh, better than Dyer for that central centre-back position. Listen, it, mean he, could, he could potentially be better, but, you know, I'd rather us find a more established centre back in Europe that's you know got that Champions League experience. Um just quickly people we are gonna draw the giveaway um when we hit the like mm. target. All you've got to do once again is write Spurs Corner in the chat um and like the video. We're about 40 likes. Apologies if you just heard that BMW Speed drive down the road. Racer. Uh the guys the guy who drives that car is a complete and utter that's a story for another day. Um, with 30 likes away from 400, <coughs> all you've got to do is right Spurs corner. 400, that's um, amazing, man. Congratulations. <laughs> um, what, um, apart from obviously, you know, the obvious right wing back and, and other players, what, what what sort of like would your be, be the marquee signing for you guys? You know, obviously everyone's got a different opinion. Some would say Hakimi, some would say Bastoni, some would say another forward. Sean, what would be, you know, the proper ideal signing for this 11 right now? You know what would really like put you on it, put you over the edge. Um, taking all things into account, I think that I might. Oh, I mean, listen. Obviously, Hakimi, but it's never going to happen, right? Like everyone just looks to the best, best person in that position and thinks Hakimi. It's never, ever, ever going to happen for me. You know, in the world of realism, if we were to sign Bremer. Because bearing in mind, I think that Guardiola and Bastoni are going to take 12 months of nurturing. I think that it's going to be a similar thing to what happened with um, Haaland. I think, and the same thing with Luis Diaz. Right? I just, I, I just think that these big, these big name signings, they take a little bit of nurturing. You can't just wake up on a Monday, go, I want him, and go and get him on a Tuesday. Liverpool had to rush to get Diaz. Man City had to wait for a, a year, 18 months to get. Harland, I think that it's probably going to be the same with, given that Gvardiol signed that new contract for 45 million release clause, I think all that thing, it, look, it reeks of a Harland structured deal where there's money for the agent, there's money for, you know, like a whole bunch of different 
uh, third party. So put that to one side, put Bastoni to one side. I think you have to wait for a year, which is why it makes sense not to settle for the bridesmaid. You loan the bridesmaid, you wait for the bride kind of thing. Um, but I do think that for me, I don't know. I listen, I'd love a right wing back Henry, but I'm also like, I kind of like a little bit of, I like, I like back in the underdog. I, I, if we're going to get Spence, I'm going to get right behind him and I'm going to like really hope that we see the best out of him. For me, what would be the marquee signing for me is not going to be Madison. I'd rather, if there's 60 million to go going, if there is 60 million going, I'd rather we go and blow it on or spend it on a center back. I'd, I'd rather go and see us get a Bremer. But if there's 90 million going, go and get both, right? Go get a Bremer or an Indica, something like that. Make sure our, our back three is solid, whichever three you choose. Right, we've got a back three that's amazing. If one or two of them get injured or need a rest, the other people that are coming in are absolutely phenomenal as well. I think we've got enough. I'd, I'd, I would love a right wing back who's exceptional, but I just don't see it happening. So for me, it would be someone like a Bremer or you know something. Yeah, someone, I that, agree, that, mate. That would take me from a six to an eight. I think. Yeah, I agree. I think you read the one on be, Kim. Yeah, I'm real. I think you read the one on Kim. I think you read yeah, the one on Kim, Johnny. But there's a though. yellow one for a hundred. Knock. Um, no, it says, hey, guys, out. great panel as usual. I think Maldini sees that JT yeah, is Yeah, I've decent. read all the Super Chats. I, I, um, I don't know if you missed it, Johnny, but I did just read it. Um, Will, what would be the, you know, the really tip of the iceberg, the standout signing for you now, looking at who we've already brought in? Oh, where's the McKinney? Um, <laughs> at this point, Still banging that McKinney, McKinney drum, drum, yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, um, for me right now, the probably the number one position on my list is it's got to be um, that right wing back game. I mean, if, if we're getting to the point now where he's considering tr attempting to try to convert Lucas Mora to that, even with the Jed Spence signing. In fact, I don't know if anybody uh, read Alistair Gold's article today or yesterday or whatever. I think it was today. Where he kind of goes in and he talks about this whole Lucas Moore thing. And he says, you know, you kind of had to wait until the player um, commits 100% to the switch before he starts to switch. But if we're signing Jed Spence, and then he's also talking about converting Lucas Moore into a wingback. Um, it, Alistair Gold insinuated that this was a sign that Conte wasn't necessarily happy about the Jed Spence signing. Um, and... Uh, Showed that this may be making a statement to somebody. Uh, Levy is <laughs> uh, the fact that he's going to try to convert Lucas Moore to a wing back. So, but hey, um, we'll wait and see how that goes down. Um, if you see uh, Spence get the cold shoulder, um, then we'll know for sure, I guess, huh? But um, Jeff Spence for me, uh, I, I think there's some things that I see interesting in him. I think he's, he's a far better dribbler. Um, I think he looks better than Emerson does from what we need. Um, I'm not 100. Hopefully he'll come in and 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 do something. But for me, a right wing back was an, a Parisich level right wing back. Yeah. Um, I agree. It doesn't matter what his name is, but as long as he's proven to be of that quality or ilk. And uh, I know Hakimi is the name. Hakimi is just an easy thing to say. A yeah. player of that ilk. It doesn't have to be Hakimi, but somebody who's proven Who would it be, though? A... Who, it, let's presume that Hakimi's unavailable, right? Like, we're just... We're throwing out the best name in the world, but uh, he's not available. He doesn't want to come. It's never going to happen. So, if it's not him, and it's better than Jed Spence, who is it? And I know there's a thousand names you could pick, but who is it for you? I, I, I like Benjamin Beauregard there, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to throw a name out there, but... Kid from Reigns. Um, it's not, but it's not really, it's Dumfries it's... would be one, two, um, Justin, even, um, James Justin, yeah. Dumfries, there, there's well, a bunch I've, of different I've people. Got, that I've got, I've got three names. One, obviously never going to happen. And that would be Marcus Lorente from Atletico Madrid, who can play center back, uh, center mid, center attacking mid, DM, right wing, right back. He can play everywhere. Um, the other one, never gonna I, happen I'm, though, right? Never gonna yeah, happen. It's never gonna happen. Um, more yeah. of a realistic one would be someone like Matty Cash. Yeah. I actually really like. I know everyone's gonna say, Matty "Oh Cash yeah," but he found he found someone in, in when we played him. Right? So. People get over it. I, I feel like he's he's more of an attacking <laughs> threat. Did, did he take out Doherty or did he take yeah, out? Yeah, take out Doherty. He's right, Doherty. Yeah. In that game. yeah, yeah. 
uh, I feel like he'd be a, he'd, he'd be a better option than what we've currently got. Um, and the other one, yeah, was, was James Justin. But there's not. It's kind of Hakimi. Obviously, you got Trent and Cancelo. The gap, the gap from Hakimi to the massive. next level is a drop. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. Um. Yeah. I just. I. I don't think there's. I think there's are there are other right midfielders, right that are out there that could be bought in and converted into that position. Um. That we're not. That a lot of people haven't looked at. That's why I like that Benjamin Beauregard kid from uh, Reigns. Um. I just think that there's a lot of players out because if you think of them, I think that we've, we've, we're thinking, I think us as fans sometimes aren't really trying to think, aren't trying to put ourselves in Conte's mind. And how does he see those players? He sings wingbacks as right midfielders and left midfielders. And he sees uh son and Kane's position in that three, four, three as attacking mids. It's actually a three, four, two, one. Um, well, I've actually got. If you want, if you if you if you're interested, tell me. You can shout me down. No, but, but I've actually got a page open on my computer right now. FB refs that compares Hakimi, Walker, Peters, Livermento, Jed Spence, James Justin, and Na, uh, Noel Molina. Um, do, you, do you have any interest in the stats, Henry? We could. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Um, just quickly. Obviously, Delict has joined Bayern Munich. Um, would no one look at Pavard from Bayern? A right back. Yeah, well, he's played, he's played right back a lot of his career through Bayern and for France. He doesn't, obviously, he doesn't bless with the attacking attributes of other wing backs, but he's a clearly better on the defensive side than anything we've got. Oh, I personally wouldn't, no. Um, <laughs> uh, with When it comes to right wing back, I think we're also overlooking another option, which is it doesn't have to be a right wing back coming in. It could be a left wing back because we got Perisic who can easily switch over. So how yeah, about going yeah. for the likes of Kostic and then grab Undica, Undica from um, uh, both from the same club? They are used yeah. to playing with each other on that left flank. 50, a 50 million quid double deal could get that done. Yeah, and then, yeah but I, you know, I don't know if per, Perisic, cap, just because he can play, people would look at people that don't know Tottenham would look at the fact that Doherty's played left wing back as well as right wing back and say, oh, Doherty could play left wing back. He can't play left wing back. He can't play left wing back the way he can play right wing back, right? And I'm not entirely sure Perisic can play right wing back the way he can play left wing back. Oh, yeah, he can. He, he can put him in central defence or up front. He'll, he'll still be quality. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Know, no, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. He can play He can play anywhere on the left. He can play something like left forward, left, left midfield, left wing back. He has played on the right. I know he's two footed, but he, he's still got a strong foot. I don't want to see. I like. I hate seeing Doherty play left wing back. I hate it. I think. It, I think he's so. Yeah, but, oh, oh, you, you just can't put Doherty and Perisic in the no, same. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Put, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that they're the same. I'm just saying that, like, the idea that just because someone can play somewhere doesn't mean they should play somewhere. Yeah, but he can and does. I mean, he, he literally can. He doesn't play. He, he, he played at right wing back for Inter. Like twice, three times for twenty minutes here and there. It wasn't. It wasn't a position he played often or regularly. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like put Messi and just say he's a forward. It doesn't matter where you play him. Just play. It's him. Not. That's not. That's, nah. It's not the same comparison. Man. Just, just quickly. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. There's there's a report coming out of um Spain. Uh, Villarreal working on a permanent deal to sign Giovanni Lo Celso. They're looking at selling Paco Al Alcacer and possibly Pau Torres. Why are we not pursuing a deal to bring in Paul Torres? Because mm. he's useless at defenders, defensively. And he turned us down twice, by the way. He turned us down last season because we weren't in the Champions League, and he turned us down this season because we were, and he would rather have gone so you, to Manchester United. You wouldn't United. take Paul Torres, Sean? You wouldn't take him? No, I don't like that. I don't think Paul Torres fits what we're trying to do. Not at all. Don't want him. Don't want, don't want him anywhere near I, I think he's a good player in, in certain systems, but I don't think he. I don't think he's a Tante. I don't think he's I've also good got, enough on the ball. Got, got all the stats if you want to see this. I don't know if you want to see it. I've done it a million times with Will and Cooper. Yeah. Did it on our show. I've got the I've got the uh, the saved the saved page. You can see statistically, Paul Torres is I, we, we compared Pal, uh, Ben Davies at left side centre back with Paul Torres with Sven Votman with um, Guardiol, Bastoni, and somebody else. I forget Bremer. who it was. And, and Gleison Bremer. And Paul Torres, 
literally came. Who was the other one? Indica. Maybe Indica as well. Pal Torres literally was bottom of the pile for every meaningful stat. Every meaningful stat. Oh, and Ling, uh, Longley was also in there. Longley, Longley and Gradio were number one or number two for pretty much every meaningful stat in terms of possession, in terms of passing, long, short, uh, medium, in terms of tackles, uh, progressive passes for pressing, everything you could possibly think of. Bastoni was like consistently good at everything. Gradio or Longley were pretty much good, uh, the, the best at 80% and poor in a couple. Sven Botman was really good at a couple of things, but bad at most things. Uh, ben Davies was always fourth or fifth. Rock bottom of every single meaningful stat was Pau Torres. I think Pau Torres, like if we were to do like a La Celso swap plus 20 mil or something like that, sure, why not, right? If you're going to send Sanchez out the door or something. Like, do, do I think There's that Pau Torres... He turned, he turned us down last season because we didn't have Champions League. And this summer he wants to go to Manchester United because they don't have Champions League over us. He doesn't think that Tottenham are good enough for him. Yeah. He's living in the 1990s. Like for me, fuck you, bro. Like you don't, you don't, you, you don't, you don't, you don't respect us. Good luck at Villarreal or good luck at Man United. See how that goes for you. Yeah, it's no, I agree with you on that on that aspect. I'm just talking just strictly from a player standpoint. Do I think he's better than some of the people that we have as backup or squad players? Yeah, I do. So, um, I, I I wouldn't mind. It's not like I say I would necessarily like cuss the guy out, but I I think Longley is better than Pau Torres. Sean, give me. To, I want to. I want to actually hear your thoughts on on long day. Um, in one moment, we've we've already got a hundred points. We're going to do this very, very, very soon. Um, your last chance to enter. Just write Spurs corner and like the video. Um, and we're only ten likes away from hitting four hundred. So if you could please smash a like, subscribe to all the guys' channels. Um, Sean and Will down below, and obviously subscribe to this channel. We're going to do it very, very shortly. All you have to do is write Spurs corner, as you can see right here. Someone's just done it, and you will be entered. Um, and I'll come back to this in approximately two or three minutes' time. Um, Sean, what is your thoughts on Lengley? Talk to me. Well, my what, opinion he... on him, my my opinion on him is based on uh, a couple of things. One of them is the stat review that we've done. That literally the three the three other people on the show here, Kuva and me and Will, uh, Kuva, Will, and I uh, got together and uh, reviewed it all. And I've got I've got the page up. Right, if you want to share the screen, I can run you through it. Run you yeah, go on, go on, share the channel. Screen. Right, and uh, here we go. Let me get it up. And then also, like, reading about the fella. Let me know when you've got it up, and I'll get my page up. And Okay. Um, oh, this is the, 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 the right wing back review. We can do it later if you want. This is the um, – so this is the – the review situation, right? So we compared uh, Longley, Bastoni, Gradiol, Pal Torres, Sven Botman, and Ben Davies. Ben Davies being the um, the benchmark, obviously, for what we already have in the left wing spot. In, in the left wing back spot, um, uh, I'll just I'll just I'll make it real quick. It will take ten like two minutes to do Can it. Can you zoom in just a tiny bit more? Is that yeah, all right? Yeah, I will. Yeah, one second. Just let me let me toggle by ninety so everyone can see on a per ninety basis. Per ninety, per ninety, per ninety. Is that okay? Is that is that zoomed in enough? Yes, yeah, perfect. Okay, so the things that matter, all right? So we, uh, we're going to gloss over the passing. We look at the pass types, right? So, in terms of, actually, we're going to come let's get this. Let's start with the defensive actions. So, um, tackles per ninety, right? So, bearing in mind that Clement Lingley is on a free transfer and that uh, he 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 was hated at Barcelona. He made a couple of bad mistakes playing in the Champions League. They he got booed off the pitch. He had a bad reaction, or he, he was seen celebrating or giving a decent, happy farewell with when they lost to Bayern Munich. And the Barcelona fans turned on him. They booed him off the pitch. And the next time he came on as a sub, a few games later, they booed him on the pitch. So bearing in mind the atmosphere in which he was being received by these like these Barcelona fans. Put this into context as we look, right? And and also, he's a free transfer. Guardiola is going to cost, I don't know, 100 million quid next year. Bastoni is obviously someone we're very much after. Uh, comparing them to Sven Botman and Ben Davies. Ben Davies is our benchmark. Forget about Sven Botman. It's kind of irrelevant because he's gone to Newcastle anyway. And Pau Torres is the guy we're talking about right now. But tackles per 90. Um, Longley is only marginally beaten by, um, uh, by, by Guardiola, right? If we look at the pressures per 90. Anyway, I'll do this in a way that you can see it. Let me pull this back a tiny bit. So again, Clomet Longley only just, only just outdone by 0.1 of a pressure per 90 than, than Gradiol, who's going to be the next fucking best defender in the world. On a percentage basis, Longley 
has a higher success rate. And will stop me, stop me if I'm making any mistakes here as I go through this. But basically, one in every two pressures that he puts onto the the opposition, Clement Longley absolutely smashes it in the defensive third. He's he's got a better slice of the pie than anybody else in the midfield third. He's only just ever so slightly beaten by Gradio. And in the attacking third, maybe he's not so good, right? He comes fourth behind these boys, but that's the role he's playing for Barcelona. Let me scoot past this and go and let's look at things that we need from a player like passing, right? Where's the passing actions? Here we go. Um, so the passing actions, uh, sorry, this one here is what we want. Passing per 90, right? If you're looking at, um, in terms of like the averages in a, in a certain position, forget about the actual complete. The completion percentage, if you're a midfielder, you're trying to get between 85 and 88% is what's considered necessary. Maybe it's a little bit lower than that in the defensive rim. But either way, Clement Longley completes 91% of every pass that he undertakes, which is better than everybody else that we're comparing them to. Now, you might think that that means that he's just passing it neck, like it's a Harry Winks of a defender, just passing it mm. sideways. But he's not. Total distance, he absolutely smashes everybody else by 500 yards per 90. Absolutely smashes it in terms of distance. Progressive distance, he's moving it forward by an extra 10% more than the next progressive guy, which is Gradio. And in compare him to Ben Davies, he passes the ball forward almost twice as much in terms of progressive distance than the guy that we currently have at centre-back in that particular spot. And people think that Ben Davies passes the ball progressively forward. People actually talk positively about Ben Davies when it comes to his progressive distance passing. And yet this boy, Clement Longley, last season and the season four, and this is over two seasons, by the way, uh, despite being hated by the Barcelona fans, despite, despite getting this horrible like rationale for him, he almost doubles the progressive distance. Now, if you look at short distances, Ben Davies is actually getting his numbers massaged by passing it round the back or passing it back into midfield, passing it to, you know, Hoiberg, whatever else. Long lay does very Pal well. Torres is bottom and been bottom for pretty much every single one. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, keep yeah. an eye out for keep an eye out for Pal Torres. This is why this is where my opinion about Pal, Pal Torres is bottom for literally. I'm, I'm going to highlight Pal Torres so you see it. I'm talking about Long lay, but let's just keep an eye on the orange on the orange bar. Right, he's bottom for completion percentages short. When you go to the midfield, Clement Longley, number one, he's passing the ball and smashing it with a 97.5% accuracy of banging the ball between 15 and 30 yards. Insane, right? Insanely accurate when it comes to medium distance carried. Yeah, Power Torres gets a little bit of a reprieve here. And Ben Davies, notice that Ben Davies, think, if you think of Ben Davies, you think he's not a bad ball playing defender. Compared to these boys, he's not that good. In the, in the medium term, in the long distance stuff, in the stuff where you're pinging the ball, either from the far left corner of the pitch all the way to the right, if you're trying to just spread the play, or if you're pinging it forward all the way towards, in our scenario, if you're on the left-hand side, you're pinging it forward towards uh, Kulisevsky. Maybe you're pinging it forward towards Lucas Moura. Maybe you're pinging it forward towards Richarlison or Harry Kane, whatever you're doing. Either way, Clement Lengley, once again, is essentially the top of the pops. He's beaten by... a an insignificant standard deviation from the norm. And Paul Torres is, you know, he's not doing too badly there. But Ben Davies, remember, this is the benchmark. Ben Davies, 61%. Six out of every 10 attempts at long passes that he fa- he, he, he attempts, he fails with. Long lay, eight out of 10. Sorry, six out of 10 he completes. Four out of 10 he fails with. Long lay only misses two out of 10. Right? Pretty, 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 pretty significant stuff. The only thing I want to call out about this if that, that's... that's uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, keep moving forward. Possession stuff. How do we do with the ball? Well, if we're looking at successful dribbles, Pal Torres is pretty successful when he's dribbling the ball. I'm not going to I'm not going to take that away from him. And Clement Longley is not that. That's not the way he's not the way he's running with it, right? So he's not someone that runs with the ball as much. However, if we're looking at carries, Clement Longley carries the ball with his. He does, he's not necessarily trying to beat the man, but when he's carrying the ball forward, he absolutely smashes it. Far more than Pal Torres, far more than Ben Davies. Total distance carried with the ball. Clement Longley, once again. And that's not a small... Look, like, look at the difference here. Sven Botman, Ben Davies, 259 metres per 90. Clement Longley, double, double trouble. Right, This guy can carry the ball uh, with, with the ball at his feet. He might not be trying to beat someone or dribble past someone, but he's not afraid to have the ball at his feet. Are you, are you excited by Longley? Yeah, I am, yeah. 
you know what? Because this is all in, this this is all, and there's so many more stats, mate. I don't know if you want to. We can move on, but I can speak about this for 20 minutes if you want. I don't want to take up too much time. But Will, myself, and Kuva went through this ad nauseum, and obviously there's context you have to take into account, Henry. Right? You have to you have to factor in the you know, who was the team who he's playing against, who were the teams, or who were the team he was playing for, what is their style, what was the league he was playing in, how many games did he play. And who were the teams they were playing against? So it's not necessarily a fair comparison to look at Barcelona versus Villarreal or Barcelona versus Tottenham because you're playing in a different system. So you have to factor all that stuff in. But on a stat-for-stat -stat basis, for me, Clement Longley, given the fact that he's absolutely smashed 90% of the most relevant stats that you would want to look at that are relevant and pertinent for a left-sided centre-back, he smashed that in spite of the fact that every single Barcelona fan absolutely fucking hates this guy because he made a couple of mistakes in big games. All this guy needs is a fucking hug. He comes into Tottenham. If the Tottenham fans get behind him, sing his name, make him feel welcome, then this is just the start. These stats, you, these you stats think, are, yeah, I, I think this guy is going to be an absolute... Because I remember Lingley at Sevilla was class. Yeah. And he, was, he was very... His first two years at Barcelona, he was class. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It's only the past I, 18 months that he's struggled. And it, it's, it started from 18 months is like the season before last. He started, he had a couple of, like, he had a big poof in, in, in a Champions League game. And the Barcelona fans just, you know, went nutso on him. And then Xavi came in and didn't play him a whole lot. But it, just, it depends on the Barcelona a, this, fan this, this you talk to. Back, this was a back, he, he played in a back, a back three at, at Seville, he played yeah. in the back two at Barcelona. He still managed to get these stats whilst being hated, playing in a system that didn't suit him. Yeah, that's, that's fucking. If, if we were to if we were to go back five years and look at his stats in those particular years, and then compare them to Paul Torres, Vardy, Old Davies, Bastoni, Botman, or whoever else, right? The only name that isn't in this list that I've done separately that really does look like a player statistically that we should be looking at in Dika. In Dika's stats are phenomenal. Indica stats on Hincapié's stats are pretty, pretty, pretty exciting. Both young players. I would love to see Indica come in because his stats are absolutely phenomenal. But for me, there's two takeaways from this stuff, and like, like I say, I won't bore you guys with it for too much longer. I won't, not, not, not longer at all. But for me, Clement Longley, get excited if we can get behind this guy, give him a hug, and tell him you're welcome at Tottenham, bro. You're, we, we, we're excited to see what you can do. I think we can absolutely see the best version of Longley that's ever had the opportunity to thrive. And the other thing that I wanted to get across was Pau Torres. I haven't really focused on him too much, but he ha he is literally bottom of every meaningful stat or maybe eight out of 10 meaningful stats. He's not as good at passing. He's terribly, ta he's terrible tacking. Look at his, uh, his stats in the air, man. His, uh, his stats. Oh, that's, this is this is probably on the, on the last year. I, this, I think these these particular stats are over this last season rather than the last two. Um, Pau Torres over the last two seasons comes down with like a fifty two percent aerial capability. He's just not good enough. He he's, he comes across as a ball playing central defender, a passer, and he is, but he's not as good at passing as Longley. He's not as good at tackling or pressurizing or doing any of the things that you would want or dribbles or carries. He's not as good as he's, he's not as good as Ben Davies at literally, you know, seven or eight out of uh, the 10 things. It is, it is a real eye, like art and I, an eye opener, like to look at um, the data on long lay. Um, uh, he, listen, I'm going to get behind him. I'm, if we can potentially get one more center back in and you're saying we've got Dyer. Just, two, if, if you, and if for people in the, you know, because I know people get polarized on stats and think stats are, 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 are dumb things or whatever, uh, which is a dumb opinion in my opinion, but everybody's uh, entitled to dumb opinions. Uh, but just go and Google and watch some YouTube videos on long lay. Look at his passing. Do like long lay passes or long lay dribbles and just watch some tape of him, right? And think and imagine that, imagine Sun being on the end of some of his through balls. Mm. And imagine Perisic being uh, on the end of some of his his, his wide passes, or or imagine Kulizevsky, Kulizevsky or, or being on the opposite side of those passes. I I think that you look. I, look I'm excited right now. I think that Longley he tends to make that pass from that left handed side. If he sees Son making a run, he'll put it on a dime right in front of him, and it's going to be 
I'm getting goosebumps just even talking about it. I, I think Clement Longley is going to be a surprise to a lot of people. I'm not upset that we got him in on a loan at all, no. especially with an option. We'll figure it out though, Will, right? Like if, yeah. if we get, if he, if he, if, you know, maybe we made a mistake by not putting the obligation or the option to buy in at a certain price, because if he does come in and if he does play and if he does absolutely smash it, like I think he could, then maybe Barcelona could like at the end of the season say, yeah, you can have him. But it's I don't know if they want to take him back him. though. Cause I think they'll move on. Barcelona tends to not do that. Um, so, and I think on how many years is he out? I think he's next year is the last, his last year on his contract. So I think that's kind of why we didn't do it. Cause there's no sense in doing an option. If he's going to be on the last year of his contract next season and you could end up getting him for, you know, um, less than where it'd be. The worry would be somebody else coming in. Um, but you know, I, I don't, I don't know, know about that necessarily, but for me, I just excited to see him coming in. Um, one of the younger guys would have been nice for the, for the future, but I mean, him at 27 is not, we could still have him for two or three years. It's just not going to give you the longevity of somebody like a Govardial or Bastoni, but um, and then just for whatever reason, too, I like Croatians. Um, they tend to work hard and be good. So, uh, it's you know, it's Rakitic it's it? killed us yesterday. So, uh, right. Let me um, let me quickly draw this. Um, you got ten seconds to quickly enter. It. Um, we're gonna do it now. Uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, let's find out who has won. It is going to be. Um, Aram, you have won. Nice. Now we had this last stream where the person actually won was not actually here, so you've got a couple of minutes to uh, just put a comment in the chat and then message me on you know either your Twitter and Instagram, and I'll sort that out. Um, but you have you are the winner. Are you still in the chat? Can you please confirm um, that you're in the chat? Congratulations, Aram! Congratulations, Aram! You win. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. You win a free subscription to the channel. <laughs> if you're, you're here, say you're here. He's there. He's there. He's there. I'm here. Six well, eleven. Back, like well done, bro. I haven't seen the comment yet. Has it not come through? Yeah, it's right there, dude. Ah, uh, there we go. Six right, um, if you can um, message me um, via Instagram, it is just down below, as you can see there, um, or on Twitter, and I'll sort that out for you as soon as I get off the stream. Um, but yeah, um, so that's that sorted. Um, still got 500 people in the stream, which is absolutely obscene. Um, please, please, please go over to Sean and Will and subscribe. Um, what? Um, let's talk about the rivals quickly. Um, we're probably going to wrap this up in 10 minutes. Um, good. Man United, Martinez, Ericsson, um, potentially Frank De Jong, Kuva. What, what are your thoughts on the teams around us strengthening? Um, Man United, Arsenal, etc. Man, Man United, I think they've got a long way to go. I don't think they're going to be a threat this season. That I think for their fans, though, they will at least get a little bit better quality football to watch next season. Uh, I think they've got um, they've got too many things to fix too quickly. Um, the Gunners, same old Arsenal, isn't it? It's uh, they bought in some you know reasonably good footballers. I mean, Jesus, he's a good player, but is he the sort of 25 goal a season player? Don't think so. Um, they're, they're still uh, uh, failed to address some of the areas they really needed to. For them, watching us get Basuma, where a lot of them won't admit it now, but that is going to kill some of them. I need to show you something, Cooper. I think you'll be interested in this. Go on, carry on. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I think Arsenal are just uh, not getting the players in that they should be getting in. They'll be again. They'll have games where they're pretty to watch. They might go on little runs where they're scoring a few goals, uh, putting a few points together. Then when uh, the crunch end of the season uh, happens or any difficult period, they're just going to get hammered again. I don't see them improving that much. They got way too many weak players in their squad. Um, I, th I think they they they're worse than us from bigging up average players and. Uh, I've not seen anything to convince me Arteta's the man to lead them to any sort of sustained level of success or even nailing the top four. I think out of the ones around us, uh, Chelsea obviously depends who they sign. At the moment, I fancy our chances of finishing above them.
But if they do go crazy and get some of the big name signings in, and because it's Chelsea, that's always a likelihood. Um, they're obviously going to be a big threat again. But the only other one I'd be worried about, and I think it's a season too soon, is going to be the likes of Newcastle for obvious reasons. Um, they will be the money bags team that are going to be rising up the table. Um, so for me, this isn't just about solidifying top four this coming season. We should be pushing to get ourselves up at the uh, top table with Liverpool and City, probably competing with Chelsea for that. I think it could be um, a, a season where we just elevate ourselves above the pack below because they have got too much to do. But uh, yeah. that depends on our transfers as well. I mean, like I said earlier, if we don't get it right, um, this is the end of the uh, all of our incomings. Uh, we could be throwing away a golden opportunity here. Yeah, I agree, mate. Um, obviously, with, with Arsenal making signers like Rafina, Martinez and Basuma, um, they're going to be very, very strong. Do you, know, do you know how many players, top top players, have rejected Arsenal this season? Uh, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Well, I mean, that's why, <laughs> that's why whenever... It's so um, funny. That's why whenever I was talking about the signings earlier in the thing, people were like, well, oh, you know, they're all doing it. Like, but they haven't signed them yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, haven't yeah. signed a single one of them, right? Like, And Manchester like, United as well, as well, like fucking watching uh, Terry Fleurs on uh, the football terrace every day. Every day it's like... Oh, uh, who's the who's the guy? Who's the guy? Um, De Jong. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's that, been that like seven weeks. On. Seven weeks of De Jong's. Uh, De Jong's in with it. De Jong's coming. De Jong's turned you down, bro. He's gone on the preseason tours. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually think Man United will still end up with a better transfer window than Arsenal will. Yeah, yeah I both, think, but uh, both of them have been rejected like <laughs> so many times. It's just beautiful to see. Well, I mean, that's because, and this, this is what I'm saying. Like. People think that, that that I don't think that they're in a rival. I don't think there are there are rivals right now. Our rivals are Chelsea, um, Liverpool, and City, not Arsenal, Man United, and those other guys. I don't. We are. I think that we'll finish third, comfortably, and possibly second, and maybe even within six points of first place. Um, How many points can you see us getting, Will? The 86 right now is what I'm projecting. And I've, I've got us down for 90, but that's assuming we are getting a couple of players in. Henry, yeah. how many points are you? Are you into that whole prediction thing? 90 is a bit. I mean, that's a bit. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit strong, Coop. No, again, again, you liked it when I break it down. What am I reasoning for? It? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, listen, I'm up <laughs> I, for it. I, 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 I don't play that game. I'll wait and see how it plans <laughs> out. But like, it's amazing. I'd nice. say if we get the if we get a couple more players, late seventies, maybe early eighty points. I can't see. I mean, ninety would be obviously if we do get the players we need. Um, but we all know that this could easily go. Well, we might not sign another player. This could easily go tits up, and we, we you know, of we get a few injuries throughout the yeah, season. Yeah. Kane gets an injury, Song gets an injury, and then we're sitting here, you know, yeah. top six. Yeah. I think I think we can get to ninety. I don't think that like I have a model for this too. By the way, um, <laughs> the uh, of course, of course, the yeah. uh, but the model requires that certain players increase Conte's uh, points per game system, um, which right now the only players that have increased that are Basuma and Perisic. Hmm. Um, so. Oh, long legs got to add a little bit of value. Yeah, a little bit of value. I mean, Richarlison too, a little bit of value, but it's not it's not enough to really impact the point. You may be talking from going from eighty six to eighty seven, um, but in, like for example, a Perisic type quality right wing back would push that up to ninety, um, pretty much just on its own based on the system. So there's a weighting a weight per position of of. So on that basis, is that why you said that for you, even in the realms of reality? You would rather us sign whoever the guy in between is, like that Dumfries you mentioned as an example. You'd rather us go and spend fifty million to get that one done than forty to get an Indica or for fifty yeah. to get a Bremer. Because yeah. of the, and would you like, rather? Would, had, you rather had, would you rather that over a Madison, uh, Madison as well? Yeah, for, I, I, I'm under. I, I have the opinion that if we had Perisic, Hakimi. With Ben, with Dyer, Davies, and Sanchez, 
we would get more points than uh, Longley, Bremer, Romero, Perisic, yeah. uh, Spence. Yeah, right? because, that, that's because, how because, because important because we only those... conceded. We conceded what was it? Eight goals from the last sixteen games. If you extrapolate yeah. that out in an ideal world, that means you concede seventeen goals next season. It's not. It's not a realistic extrapolation though, because yeah, yeah obviously. But, yeah. but I mean, um, but what I'm saying is that's how important that position is yeah, I you. I hear you. in I the hear you. system in which we're trying to operate. So. Yes, signing those center backs helps, especially ball playing ones, because they are part of the creative force in a Conte system. That's why you see sometimes you'll see Romero in the box, sometimes you see Davies in the box. Right? They 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 do are expected to get forward and push uh, and play passes. So, um, but for me, it's just that 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 right wing back is so important, and it's so. Um, and Spence is too much of a risk, right? Like yeah. He could be a, he could be an absolute he could be the like if you're playing, flip of the if, coin. If dude. you're playing Premier League, fancy Premier League, you can go and pay for you, you pay put him in at a four million quid spot, right? And he might turn out to be just the signing of the century, but he could also turn out to be an absolute out of his depth shit show. Exactly, could be could be horrible. Um, but and that's why it's just a wait and see for me. It's there's not. I see things in his game. I see things in Jess Spencer's games that could be. It could be good, but there's just not enough evidence out there for me to make a to, a justified reason why he will be good, right? I'm so for you. me, I all agree. I all I can I say is it, is it, is it could. I agree. Um, um, and where does Brian Hill fit in all of this? Um, <laughs> he's you know I we need it's it's supposed to rain a lot this fall, so we're gonna need somebody to clean boots. So. <laughs> That'd be so horrible. Um, hey, yeah. yeah, you got you got a negative. You know, like you hear about positivity bias. You got a negativity bias against Brian Hill, my friend. No, <laughs> I just do it to wind up. people up now. I always hate this thing about oh, your glass is half empty or your glass is half full. I'm sick of that analogy. Full stop. I want a full glass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what, and what, is, and what is a full glass? What does a full glass look like for you, man? Is that a half glass? Is that a, a couple of full glass? Like a full glass. Couple of wing backs, couple of wing backs, and a centre back. So you still Madison. want three? You want three more done, and Madison's not included. You don't think Madison's necessary? Madison will help as well. Madison and uh, 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 um, I've forgotten his name now. And cleaning cleaning boots yeah. is an important job. Boots got to be looking good and shiny. Don't be playing down. <laughs> don't be disrespecting the boot cleaners. So yeah, Madison, well yeah, Madison Depay, two two wing backs and a centre back, and we Madison Depay and two wing backs and a centre back. Plenty well, of players to go out the door. Eleven the players end. in. Eleven players in. Yeah, well, well, you got nothing. That's, that's what I'd want. Yeah, obviously, that's is it unlikely? Probably yes. because yes. it is not, involves getting rid of a lot of players. <laughs> that's probably the next big step on the transfer window. It's getting some of the players out, generate some more funds. So speaking on, on getting rid of players out, um, will talk to me. Half of our fan base, social media, really sees a lot in Brian Hill. And I'm not trying to trigger you. I'm not trying to rattle your cage. I'm just saying, what are these people fucking looking at? I, 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 the nutmeg, right? Like this. Look, I'm telling. I, I've even changed it. I don't even use the eye test anymore. I just call it the feelings test now, because it's it's, it's um. <laughs> It's all about people's feelings. That's amazing. You know, um, you know, and and I'm sorry, but stats don't care about your feelings. They just don't, right? Like, yeah, but what you, stats are you looking at to write Hill off? Uh, just, hit, just type his name into FBRF Brian and no, just look but at like, what stats are you looking at? Like, you, like all of them. <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't had a chance. He hasn't done anything. You know, on any he's meaning. played more minutes than a lot of. He played more minutes than Stephen Burvine did. Um, yeah, he wasn't at Tottenham. It doesn't matter where he's at if he's not it doing it here. It if he's if he's not doing it here and he can't do it in a lesser league. No, but it's a different. I, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not defending him. I, I you're writing him off. I think you've made your mind up on him and you've written him off. And I think that he so has. I only a, he, has, he hasn't had enough of a chance at Tottenham. Don't write. To I don't off. write players off. Um, at all. What I do is you're crap until you've demonstrated you're not crap. Right. So in order for him to for me to give him praise, then he needs to be better than like the 20th percentile in every statistic besides dribbling. Okay. Well, he was like the third, the third up there 
man, like in the in the half that he played against the All Stars, he was arguably first or second on the uh, scoring sheet for huh for the game against the Korea guys. Yeah, in the, in the forty five minutes he played, he he did more. Lucas Mora and him did more than anybody else in a in a in a very creative game. For me, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying you're wrong. What did I'm he just, do? He was creative. He got the ball. He was, he was, he was, he was doing things. He was doing things. What, what, okay, what, what did Richarlison do? He didn't do anything. Do? What, did Kane do? What, did, what did Harry Kane do? What did Richarlison do? What did he Sonny scored do? two goals. Uh, but, um, uh, the goal, the goal, goals don't matter. Goals don't matter in that in that scenario. Right? They we do don't matter. Care about, we don't care about the scoreline. I thought we agreed that we don't care about the scoreline. We only care about performances, right? Yeah, the performance. Harry yeah. Kane came on. I'm talking about his performance. Came in at intimate impact, striking goals from from distance. In fact, he, in fact. In fact, out of all of the crap that I gave Harry Kane last season, Harry Kane this season to me looks he like he's going to come out firing. I hope you're right. I, 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 I don't disagree. I'm just saying that Brian Hill was was he looked better. He he looked busy. He looked busy. Uh, but busy busy doesn't is that's not a important thing for me. Busyness, looking busy. That's the thing. Brian Hill looks scoring, busy. Scoring, right when he goals, runs, he moves his shoulders friendly. quickly. But he, he moves his, in my opinion, he, he has flicks a, his hair. He, he had a better 45 minutes, a more visible 45 minutes, things that got me excited about him than Harry Kane did, just because Harry Kane scored uh, scored a good shot and also got a free kick that that you know was just a people, random people, yeah, people got excited about Lewis Holtby. Look at his enthusiasm. Look away, he's running around the pitch. Oh, he's so yeah, I don't good. care about that. That's the most in fact, that's the most annoying thing. Like, I don't like you if you're that guy. Right. If you're that guy who runs around aimlessly and then does nothing, that's even worse because that means Brian you Hill don't know do what that. you're doing. I think, that's unfair. I think that's massively unfair on Brian Hill. I thought he put in a really good shift in the 45 minutes. I thought he no. was busy. I thought he was intriguing. Don't, I want to see more from him. Sean, do you see Brian Hill in a Spurs shirt next season? A lot of gap. No, that's the wrong question. Is there a future at Tottenham for Brian Hill? Because I'm going to ask the exact same question to Will. Um, and then Coover as well. Uh, listen, three weeks ago, I was said on my own channel, I don't think you'll ever see Brian Hill in a Tottenham shirt again in a professional game, right? So I would be disingenuous if I said yes, based on the 45-minute show. All I will say is that I didn't think he was... He was um, I think he. I think for the forty-five minutes that he had, he was he he was intriguing and interesting to me, and I would like to see him against Rangers. I'd like, I'd like to see it. Do I think he'll play be a part of the squad in the season coming up? No. Do I think he'll be loaned out? Yes. Do I think we'll sell him? No. Do I? You know, I, I don't think he'll be a part of it because I don't know where he fits in yet. I still think there's lots for him to improve on. But am I a little bit intrigued by by him? Yeah, and I always was. I just I don't think he's ready yet, but I don't think. If we sold him and to get our money back, fair enough. Let the guy go and find his boots. Set oh, we'll never get but, our money back for him. But people. do I? Do I? If someone said I'll, I'll I'll give you ten million or eight million quid for him now to take him off your hands, do I let him go? No, I don't. Because I think I think there's a really good player. I do think I there's a really good player. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I think he is. I know you don't. You're, I think you've got a negativity bias towards him. I think you I don't have a negativity you bias. You made your mind up on him a long time ago, and that's not going to change. I, I made my. I I was. I was certain that he would do exactly what he's done before we even yeah. before he even came because yeah, so the numbers don't you lie mind, you made your mind up on him and now you're worried about allowing him the opportunity to prove you no, wrong he's 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 allowed to play as many times as he wants as the coach deems him <laughs> to play what i'm i'm not worried in fact if i'm ever if there was ever a player that i was worried that i would that my prediction of them would be wrong um it's definitely not Brian Hill. Um, the guy is, is See, well, you need to have flexibility of thought, right? Like I, I, I was, I was massively against Richarlison. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the value in the money. I understand the premise of why we, why, you know, why he, we need to get people in to do that. Blah, 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 blah. I get all the ideas that have been positive, thrown at me a million times over. I understand all that. I was against the transfer. And then I watched him in the first game and I was like, he didn't play well, but he actually, my expectation of, of him was here and he's here. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm loosening up. I'm open to him surprising me to the upside. Will he? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> with saying, 
I'm okay if if he scores like three goals in his first seven he games, won't. eight games. Yeah, of course I will. I'll be. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm he gonna, won't if, score get goals. Oh, if he doesn't, then what the fuck is the point of having him in there then? Exactly, that's my point. <laughs> oh, so you're against him as well? Okay. Brian Hill. Okay. Yeah. No, no, not Brian Hill. I'm talking about Richarlison. Oh no, Richarlison will score goals. Brian Hill no. won't. But if Richarlison comes in and bangs in three goals in his first eight games in the Premier League, yeah. however many minutes he gets, or if he goes and does something magical in the Carling Cup or whatever else, I'll happily say, you know what, my reservations were thus, and I stand by them. But you know what? Yeah, and if Brian I'm comes, not, if Brian Hill come in and score. scores five I goals in a season, if he scores five goals in a season, he's not gonna, he's not gonna I'll come out and say he wasn't as bad as as I said he was. But no, he won't. He's not going to play this season at Tottenham. But you've made your mind up on him. He won't score ago. five goals anywhere. You made your mind. It doesn't have to. It's not all about scoring goals, mate. He's not necessarily. He's a forward. Stop. It is all about scoring goals. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, well, let, let me let me reflect on that for a second. There's lots of players mm. that you, but you didn't want. You, do you want Memphis Depay? No. Okay, but he scores goals. He scores a goal every other yeah, game. Yeah, I don't. I don't want Memphis did. Depay for other reasons. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you're a forward, like same reason why I didn't like Lamella. Same reason why I don't necessarily rate Lucas Mora, right? Mm. Is if you're a forward, you, if you don't score five goals a season in all competitions, you are piss poor. Piss yeah. poor. But Rashad right? and we have only... Brian Hill who has oh, scored. So five, so five goals is the is the boundary, is it? Yeah, and so hold on. Hold on. There's some of the Rashad things. Rashad only scored nine goals in all competitions, at absent penalty kicks. No, uh, in all competitions, he scored 13 last season. No, yeah, but he, four of them were penalty kicks, and he's not going to yeah. score penalty kicks for Tottenham because Harry Kane's okay. going to take them. So, nine goals. Yeah. 16 million quid is value for money for a nine-goal-a-season striker. With two years left on his contract, that's what it costs. Value for money. I'm not, I'm not concerned about value, value for money. Oh, okay, so now we're changing the metrics of the, com of the debate. Okay. What's the metric of the debate? We're talking about Brian Hill being no, good or not. We're talking about like I never how, said Brian you, he was good for value for how money. Do you, how do you define and I'm asking you, is is it five goals that defines what a forward needs to score? Yes, not a forward goals. must score five. at least five goals five. per season. But, but but nine is okay. Nine's good enough to spend spend a club record signing on. I mean, we spent forty million on Brian Hill and he gets zero. So we just spent forty million quid on Brian yes, Hill. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We spent yes, twenty five million on him and we, we gave did. away Lamella. And Lamella's market value at that time was according to who? According you? to anybody, transfer market, sofa score, <laughs> anybody else. You can't market. hold on. No, 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 transfer stop. You can't tell me the. Value. You can't tell me that Eric Lamella had no value. So you just only not, what the I'm price was he, for I'm him. Saying, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm, I'm just saying it was. You're telling me million. it's it's illogical to assume that Eric Lamella was worth 17 million euro. Yeah, because he had a year left on his contract. For the same reason, yeah, why you 17 just said million years. euro with one year left on his contract at 32 years old. Yeah, he's not 32. Eric Lamella is 32 now. No, 31. he's not. How old is he? <laughs> he's like 29. I don't think about that. Hang on a second. Let's have a look at that. Let's look that up. 32. 30. He's 30. Yeah. Now, he was 29 when we sold him. Right. <laughs> 40 million pound easily, right? Easy. No, 40 million. Yes. No, no chance. Well, this, I'm not even, everything I, I'm not, I, 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 back my, I back myself into a corner here where I'm defending the, the transfer. I didn't agree with the transfer of, of uh, Brian Hill at the time either. So I'm actually really on the, 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 the other thing, <laughs> too. The thing that I have. Eric, hold on. The, the thing that Brian I have Hill a bias. Is, the thing I have a bias is, is not true, right? If Brian Hill actually performed well, I would say he performed well. I'm not biased against him at all. There is no bias. The bias is against some imaginary possibility that he may play well. I don't do mays or could be's. I do has and has nots. That's it. So it doesn't matter what the potential I, I, yeah, you know, of a person I'm, I'm, I'm is. I'm not entirely sure how I got myself into a, into a debate here where I'm defending um, Eric Lamella or the transfer value because I thought that the price for the I thought the price for Brian Hill at the time was extortionate. So I yeah, so the price the, and it's not even about uh, what Brian Hill has done for Tottenham either. He hasn't done anything for anyone. He didn't do anything for Vir Villarreal, right? He only played. He could only get in. He played an average of full ninety minutes. Played thirteen matches. Only started a handful of those. Got one assist in over almost a thousand minutes. 
right? Yeah. That's it. He okay. did nothing for them. He did nothing for the yeah. U23 Spain Olympic team that he couldn't even start for. I actually, I'm actually going to walk away from the debate because I don't even know how I got myself backed into a corner here where I was debating for the sake of debating. I actually, I'm just, uh, Brian Hill is not the hill I'm going to fuck. It's not the Brian Hill. Yeah, I'm so that's, a, that's the wrong hill to die on, my friend. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. I just think that he he had a good forty five minutes and he's worth a second look. That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> he can play as many time as as much time as is Conte um, wants yeah, to I play. I take him. your point. I take your point on the valuations as well because I never was okay with it either. So yeah, I found myself defending yeah. the indefensible. Yeah, I think I think I'm going to disagree with Will in a in a slightly different way, but um. It's you've got to appreciate what the role is of each of those attackers. I don't think it's fair to just judge them on goal output uh, because there's there's the likes of I don't know how, how long people have been watching the English game. He used to be a player for Southampton called Ian Dowie. He was a big elephant man of a centre forward. He scored he scored about thirty goals in his career with them over about yeah. five years. Terrible goal output. But his role was to be the, his role was to be the target man. For the likes of Matt Letizia to play off, and yeah. he scored the goals. Emil Heskey, so, Emil Heskey, Emil Heskey for Owen, right? Yeah, if you like, yeah. if you like, yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of player. So in those kind of roles, I think the goal output isn't as important. But when you're looking at the likes of Brian Hill or any, any of those sort of wider players, you've got to look at goal output and you've got to look at goals created as well. Yeah, and that's um, why I want to show this sentence. It's just so, can you put that up there real quick, Henry? Yeah. And when he can get those percentiles to at least 50, then I'll say he can have a chance. But right now, when he's the best he's got is passes attempted and he's 30 percentile for his attacking midfielder wingers. Um, yeah. The only thing he can do is receive passes and dribble. Scroll down. Can you go? Is that the extended? Can you go to the extended list, please? Yeah. And what's that? What's the metric of that? Is that based on last season or last three hundred and sixty-five days? The same as, as it is for every player. Okay, scroll down. Have it's, a look. it's it's uh being weird. Yeah, to be honest, like I listen, I found myself defending. A, so an shooting. I didn't, didn't particularly want to do that, but. Um, what do you what do you standard stats passing? Scroll down. Like, we can look at the greens and see what the, if there's any greens. If there's no greens, we can. There's hardly any greens. Passes into penalty area. Okay. Yeah. Pass types, crosses. The best thing players. is, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not not a lot to get excited about. Keep going, keep going. Passes blocked. <laughs> yeah. So here's your SCA. You're creating your uh, assist to the assists. Uh, yeah. But yeah, fair, start... fair enough. I found myself, like I say, I, I, yeah, I'm happy to walk away from that debate and just concede because I'm not even. He's a good defender. Maybe he can play wing back. But um, I'm not, I'm not even that bothered about Brian Hill. I just thought he, I think he's someone that's inter he's interesting to me, and I'm happy to see him play in the friendlies. Was the point I was making? I want to see a little bit more from him against Rangers and then maybe against Roma, and then see what we see what happens. But I'm not trying I, to make I, out like I think, I think, I think be... Full Bull has just made a comment that sort of settles it for me. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, I walk away from this one with my uh, with my cap, uh, my white flag surrendered. I, I don't even know why I was defending him. But, uh, yeah, no, but I just don't understand why people, our fans too, get so upset about it when I just when I'm and it's, I don't have a bias towards him at all. It's not a bias. Oh, geez, you can hear that my the puppy is going fucking obscene. So just give me one moment. Sorry. Is there's no bias for me against Hill? If he performs well, then he'll get credit for it. I, I want all of the players yeah, that we enough, have to perform enough. to perform enough, well. Man. Unfortunately, not all of them do. I'm, yeah, I would track him. I, I said you had a negativity uh, bias. You maybe you don't. Um, so it's like me with Emerson. If if we are going to be keeping Emerson and he does play a lot of games next season, I'm going to be desperate for him to prove me wrong. And he does well attacking wise, but um, yeah. just don't see it. And I just want to I want to define for people too. Like Zay says, for sure it's a bias. A bias means that in the face of contradictory information, you continue yeah. to hold to your position. For example. Sean got contradictory information. He said, "You know what? You're. Hey, I'll, I'm going to back off that. That's not a bias. That means you're just being. You're. You can disagree. Now, if you were to show me Brian Hill's been good here, 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 and I said, "Fuck that. He's still shit." That's a bias, right? But the fact is, until Brian Hill, until there is contradictory information to my position, yeah. uh, I'm not going to change it. And Fair that's enough, not man. a bias. That's just being. Um, 
Yep. Rational. I was wrong. I hold it up. Hold my hands up. The yeah, yeah, like this. Oh, oh, yeah. But it's more for the people in the comments who say he keeps saying it's it's a, it's a bias. It's not an opinion. Opinions uh, aren't. Um, but yeah. I like, I like the way. show. That's been good fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, Sean, if you're always welcome to call, mate. Every Sunday, we are um, I, we are going to finish now. Um, buy my shirt. I would go live a lot longer, but I've got a very very busy day at work tomorrow. Um, How's the new job the working out? You enjoying it? I'm working from home, but it's just I've just got I've got to start early and I've got mountains to do. So yeah. Um big up to everyone who's been tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to uh Sean and Will. The links are down below and please subscribe to this channel as well. We've had a, nearly a uh, hundred new subscribers off this show alone, which is absolutely obscene. Um and we're closing on 7k. So big up to everyone who's tuned in. Um much love, appreciate that. Sorry if I've missed any super chats uh, that have just come in. Um, Henry loves the chaos. I see you. I don't love the chaos. I was just asking because it looked like <laughs> you were going to defend Hill, and I obviously know Will can't stand him. So I just wanted to see both sides of the debate. I wanted chaos. You know, I'd start, you know, irritating Sava, and I clearly don't do that. I try to defuse the situation. Um, and Bob Spurs. No, but coming. like it's Sava too. He'll take shots of stats. Like I, he thinks. Uh, yeah, I've watched his shows with him and Graham, and the, just people have a absolute hundred percent misconception about what stats are um stats are simply an event that happened in reality right mm -hmm. a person's op opinion analysis hypothesis uh, application of those stats can be wrong right but the event can't right son either scored 23 goals last season or he did not right it's a true dichotomy statistics are an a event that happened in reality now, my interpretation of those can be different than Sean's and Kuva's and anybody else. Anything you watch with your eye is a statistic. It is an event that happened in reality. Right? So there's no difference between statistics and the eye test. That's why I stopped calling it the eye test. I'm calling it the feelings test now. Right? Because if, you, if you're basing this off of your feelings and not what actually happened in reality, um, you have problems. And it's called a confirmation yeah. bias. We are going to finish. Um, Sean, Kuva, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Will, as always, pleasure. Um, I'll be back tomorrow to bring out some more content. Before we go, Will, um, have you got any content coming out you know, in the next couple of days? Me? Uh, Do... I'm not going to stream tonight. I'm actually not feeling good. I'm having really bad indigestion, to be honest with you. Um, it's been painful to be here. But I'm here just for you, Henry. Um, I appreciate that. Make sure you take some tablets and sort yourself out. Yeah, I took some. Ta I took four tablets earlier today. It's not it hasn't helped. Um, but I will be doing a show sometime this midweek. So, um, check it out. Appreciate that. Um, Sean, have you got have you got much content coming out? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got uh, there's uh three streams coming out before the Saturday watch along. We do watch alongs on uh, Spurs Talk Show. If anyone's interested, um, and you can find me at at Spurs Talk Show. I know, I know that. Uh, my, I don't think my link is in the description yet, but I hopefully uh, um, oh, it, it, will stick I'll, it in. Right, yeah. I'll literally do it right now. Yeah, so you can find me at Spurs Talk Show. You can see the, see the name there. Um, we're going to do one tomorrow. We're going to do a right wing back um, review. Just some of the stats that we looked through today. We're going to go into detail uh, with um, the right wing back options. If we're happy with Jed Spence, great. If we're happy with Emerson or we're happy with uh, Doherty, great. But let's compare them all to the 15 or 20 other players that are out there. We're going to do that tomorrow. Similar sort of thing with FB reps that we did today. And then there's a couple other things happening. Wherever the new, the normal transfer news, views and clues are, you can find it um, every morning. It is in the description now. It's there. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, anytime between... I go live anytime between... Well, we, go in, we go live impromptu. So if you are going to subscribe, you should probably hit the notification bell because we just we don't have a regular schedule. But tomorrow you'll probably see us live about midday. Uh, thank you, mate, Henry. I really appreciated it. Really enjoyed it, and uh, love being on with uh, with Iggy and uh, you, Will and Cooper and you, Henry. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And just for Carl Higgins, there aren't many variables that shape stats. The goal, the ball either crossed the goal line or it did not. It's the only variable. <laughs> they are. I, mean, I, I, think, I think what you might mean is there's context. There's context. Right, but the but that's not the stat. Yeah, I know. You, you got know. you got to separate the hypothesis, the just... the analysis from the event itself. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, people. That's what. They, they they lump in the statistic in with the bad uh, analysis. An analysis can be horrible, right? 
stati- the number itself is just data. It's unbiased. Yeah. It's, you but know, it's not, it's, 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 it has very little value unless you throw in context. Um, no, there's a lot of value the, to the, it. The only exception you could make is some of those VAR decisions where was it an intentional handball and where's the cutoff point between the natural position for an arm and an unnatural mm-hmm. one? Because those are all subjective, right? That's why. It, it, exactly. When you yeah. make it, when you remove the subjectivity for something, it becomes like, like right now, like with offsides, people can disagree with it if they want. But they've removed the subjectivity from it. You are either offside or you you are not, right? It doesn't matter by how much, whether you can see space, whether the guy's leaning or not leaning. Yeah. It's it's just black and white. It is a true dichotomy, offside or not offside, right? That is the way that they have it now. You you, mm. you can't really complain with things that are objectively the case, right? I don't. Yeah. But I think I think I think what Carl was probably meaning to say, rather than saying what he said was probably the context. Like the, when he said variables, what he probably meant was context, right? Like the, the stats only mean, the stats are, like you can't argue with They the mean what they mean, right? Like yeah, but, but if, he but, scored with, 23 without, without, goals. When he right. said variables, what I think, I hope he meant was context. That, you know, like Darwin Nunes, for example, scored a no, 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 when fucking... you're when you're When you're comparing two players, right? So now you have a hypothesis, right, that you're creating there. If you're comparing Sun to Nunes and you say, who is the better player? Your hypothesis, my hypothesis is Sun is the better player because, and then you debate the hypothesis. <laughs> Not no, the numbers. It. It's I not the numbers' fault. I get, fault. It. I, I get yeah. it. I get it. The, stat, the stats are true, but I, I'm what I'm saying is I think what Carl was hopefully intimating was that when he said variables, I think he meant context in that uh, just because someone scores a hundred goals in Jed Spence goes and scores a hundred goals last season, if he didn't, but if he did in the in the championship, how how much can we take from those stats given the fact that they're in the and that's what I, I think he meant by variable. He really meant context. I hope I'm right there, Carl, doing your... Yeah, he says, if one team makes a lot of three-yard passes, then their accuracy is going to be higher. That's not necessarily the case, by the way. It could be the case, and that could be a good argument. You'd have to go and look, though, and look at the distance. And this is the problem. There's a lot more statistics. I think <laughs> I think the deal with this is that you've had in the past... I mean, you can see the evidence for it on FB Ref by itself. Statistics, the extent... Uh, the number of statistics that are being recorded now has increased dramatically over the last six to seven years, right? Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of, of 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 learning and being able to understand how to read those numbers and interpret them correctly, right? If you notice, I don't make very many... Um, if I compare something, I compare it for everybody. I always do apples to apples, right? Am I, if I'm saying based on these metrics dot 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 this player is better than that player it's it's not emotional it's simply based on the numbers this player has performed better with these metrics than that player i don't make but what's even worse as though long, is when as, you long, go off, as long as long as you say based on these metrics darwin Nunes is better than sunny because darwin Nunes scored 100 goals like on yeah, that's on what i always that, say on, on that alone maybe but unless you have to caveat it with asterisks everywhere saying he did this in a shit league and he did it, you know, and no, no, only- but, but what I'm saying is when I compare those, I always do that in the league, right? In the top five leagues in Europe, because there isn't a huge difference between the top five. There may, there is a difference, but there's not a huge difference. Um, but there is a huge difference outside of the top five. Like France, for example, is is, is I I don't even like comp- using France to be, to be honest with you, but I can't get it's away with it because based. it's the team based, right? Like, for example, one of the things I, I made a massive deal, and you guys were part of this, talking about Longley. Longley looked far better than everyone else we compared him to. However, the context that we never discussed, we just acknowledged it. There's context, but we never really looked into it. What were the games that he played in? Who did he play against when those game when that when when those numbers were massaged by his passing was significantly better? than it was against other teams. What it's, were those teams against, right? And, I, 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 think, and, I don't think, so think that's rev- relevant very, because well, you, you, you play the same 38 teams every season for the most part, except for the teams that get relegated yeah, okay, and move okay. up and down. If, so. if Romero or if Harry Kane scored, if Harry, just for example, as a, as, a, as a scenario, if Harry Kane scored seven hat-tricks next season and he did it against Nottingham Forest home and away, Fulham home and away, um, I don't know, Brighton home and away, 
right, but didn't score a bean against any of the top three teams, right, then somebody in Spain or somebody in Argentina that's looking at FB refs could look at Harry Kane and say, well, the stats say that Harry Kane scored X amount of goals. But unless you do look under the surface, unless you look under the surface and factor in the goals that he scored, when he scored them, who he scored them against, and the and, and the variables that that considers, then if you're just taking the stats at top line data, you are missing a massive amount of context. And that's, yeah, and, and, and that's not based you, on the league. You can get into an infinite regret. On, you, hold on. You can get into an infinite regress yeah, of, course, of context. Of you could yeah. say, well, well, maybe maybe Harry Kane had diarrhea on the day before 100%. he had Man City and he didn't 100%. score goals. So you, there's a there's got to be a point where you just say, okay, here is the the context. Here's the metric. Yeah, as long, and as, as, long not, as long as you acknowledge that we are not look, we're looking at top line level data and not bottom level data. We're not looking into any of this any of the surroundings. Then this is what we can assume. That's what we can assume. But you can't make an assumption that one player is better than another based purely on the the goals they scored or the tackles they made and, and, and don't look beneath the surface. Yeah. So if for me, it's, it's that, abductive. Have, yeah. It's abductive because if you look at it, because I, I, if you notice, I don't ever do single seasons. Uh, I always do Even multiple do it years. Seasons, it doesn't matter. I, like I'm saying that there is a weakness. It does matter that. because when you, you when you have a historical yeah, you trend. To, you start to even out the, the variables. Yeah. I get it. I totally take your point. You start to get through the variables, but and you still have to acknowledge that the stats are only so whatever percentage it is they're only so reliable because you now, haven't if you if, you, if the, you see hysterical trends over five years it's it's reliable oh, sean you were happy to write off pau torres by looking at stats no i know i'm i'm not i'm not listen i'm saying what, what i'm saying right now is 100 percent consistent I, I, i'm saying listen, i'm not I, I love stats i'm with i'm just for the purposes of the conversation i'm just saying as long as everyone acknowledges that stats are what they are they're useful tools and depending on how deep you go is how much value you can really assume from it but well, i haven't looked as into long as people acknowledge right? that statistics are facts and our opinions our analysis of those are not right then then we're fine right the problem my, my point with the eye test the feelings test is me saying based on this 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 and this over the past three years i think this player is better than x player is far more far more uh factually based than yo come on bro we all know he's a better baller yeah 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 i agree with that I agree right with like that as well. To say, I don't need to look at it to see if he's a better baller or not, bro, is not an argument based in any evidence at 100%. all. And Will, yeah. for what it's worth, despite Cooper throwing the spanner in the works there, I'm not in any way undermining stats or, because I used it earlier, I'm just saying that as long as everyone is considering everything, as long as everyone takes everything with a pinch of salt, how much pinch you take is up to you. It depends on how much value you place in various stats. But yeah, my my ball okay. knowledge is better than your ball knowledge, bro, because I don't pronounce my R's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like that you, argument for me you, always are, gets... Are you going to do the English accent? Well, we haven't had that today. Which one? I've got a couple. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do both. Why would I waste my time? <laughs> <laughs> that's so good i love it and what's the other one what's the other one you got where, where's where's the glasses oh, <laughs> what's the other one what's the other one welcome to your daily moaning <laughs> right, that is really really good that would jump. I, that would know, jump. Right. I do not know what you're talking about henry <laughs> Sorry, right, we do need to finish because I, 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 yeah, I'm, you dribble and you drabble. I've got to take the well, he's finally cool enough now to actually take the dog out, and it's midnight. What dog have you got, man? What, what, what well, you got? Me, dog, uh, presumably. Can you show, can you, can you show him on the stream? I, I can't, she's below my desk. Okay, um, if she comes out well, which is a uh, black Labrador. Nice, man. So, nice, nice. But apparently, cool. when I put on those glasses and I talk like that, my ball IQ goes up like 300 points, so. Oh, <laughs> but listen, thank you this to everyone who tuned in. Um, everyone's links down below, so go and subscribe. Um, smash the like on the way out on the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all next week. Lots more content coming. So stay tuned. Put the notification bell on, not just on my channel, but everyone's channel link down below. 